sleeping over in a sleeping bag on my floor tonight. Bitch boy, bitch boy, bitch boy, bitch boy, bitch boy, bitch boy, slap right. We're both painfully based in white. Bitch boy, slap right. Try to go and touch each other inappropriately tonight. Podcast is full of comedic exaggerations, independent thought, insensitivity, and other offensive content. We strongly urge all viewers and listeners to keep their brains and their skulls throughout the entire duration of this podcast. Failure to do so will result in immediate death. If you wish to support this podcast, there are several ways to do so. First, you can sign up for a free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants. Audible is the foremost seller of audiobooks today with hundreds of thousands of titles to satisfy all manner of tastes. Second, if you shop on Amazon.com, please use the Amazon affiliate links in the description section of this video. Every purchase you make helps to support this podcast's existence. Third, please peruse our merchandise and see if any of it strikes your fancy. We sell a lot of t-shirts, so we must be doing something right. One more thing before I go. To make an official submission to the Drunken Peasants, whether it be a video for one of our segments, or fan art, or a picture of you wearing one of our shirts, or anything you think we might want to use on the show, that stuff needs to be sent to the Drunken Peasants Facebook inbox. Please do not send correspondence, as this will be deleted unread. With all that shit out of the way, it's time to begin the show. From the frigid armpit of America, this is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ, bringing you opinions of the news from an altered perspective. Fuck it! Hey man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. What the fuck you talking about, atheist? You know it's okay. You're it's nothing, okay. KJ. You're garbage. It's okay. I just want to no, no, be no, light. No, no, You're fuck garbage. Fuck 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 <laughs> and now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. Fucking thing. Hello, sucks. everyone. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, episode 228, April 13th, 2016. <laughs> ben, I just realized that. Smoke weed every day. Yeah, I realized that too. But I realized that um, this show's like a freak show, and you're like the ringmaster. I am. You know I what? am. Snap right up, everybody, and witness the incredible pizza eating man. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I did eat pizza today, too. I, yeah, I know. All I can say is this is no episode 238. You better have some plan for episode 238. Oh. Sorry. The truth will be revealed in episode 238. You ain't got shit. Oh, I do? I do. Okay. Fine, then. We're going to bring uh, Mr. Zigo on. If we must. <coughs> Fucking faggot. Never did like no Paul Zigo. He's always been a piece of shit. The, 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 the amazing fat man has showed up to the three ring circus here. Yeah, you are the fattest one. <laughs> I am, yeah. More dedicated to weight loss than you, though, TJ. Yeah, well, maybe that he won't be the fattest true. one. Maybe he won't always be the fattest one, then. 
Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not, yeah. That could be Paul's goal. Oh, uh, Paul, you know what? That'd be great if you did that. Lose enough weight so TJ is now officially, yet, yet again, the fattest drunken Just tiger. remember this, Paul. You're twice as fat as I am, and I'm fat. Wait a minute. You're I'm twi I'm what? twice as fat as you? <laughs> twice you? Yeah, I don't think that's true. Uh, hey, man, when we did that side-by-side -side comparison, that was the verdict everyone came to. It was like, man, Paul's twice as fat as TJ. So... I don't remember saying no. that. Whatever. Go back and look at the tape. Why even bother? Because if it turned out you were wrong, you'd come up with some bullshit to where to, to try and explain where you weren't actually wrong and there was some sort of circumstance. Cross that control. bridge when we come. TJ needs yeah. to lose five hundred pounds. But I, you, you, <laughs> someone says that. I, I, I love, at any rate, I love them. Ben, you so know, that was great. You know, we fucking we me and Scotty combined. Offered TJ a thousand dollars, a thousand fucking dollars, if he could live on the street homeless for two nights, so forty-eight hours, and he would probably what we give him like twenty twenty bucks. Yeah, twenty. And, you bucks. know, I was up front with him. I'm like, look, guys, I just can't do that. I'm just not capable. Oh fuck you! And, no, you fucking didn't, and TJ. Then, but this, you'll see, they started berating me and like, do it, you fucking faggot. You fucking lying, you fucking lying piece all. of shit. He's, you just, could tell he's lying by the way he smirks. <laughs> I'm just laughing because Scotty you, was fucking. You know what's funny me. is like. But me and Ben were taking the piss out of him uh, like, for like two hours. We're going like, TJ, you're so full of shit. No, define could. Define this. Mm -hmm. And then like, we're like, whatever. We leave. And then we're driving back. And we're like maybe a minute away from like, of, uh, we've left this restaurant. And TJ's all like, we get to the, the conversation. Like, oh, something about camping. And TJ's like, camping? Who would want to sleep outside? And, and I, mind you, he said this after he said it would be worse. To live in a studio apartment on fifty dollars a day, yeah. that it would be to fucking be homeless yeah, in the heart of a city, TJ. That'd right. be so terrible for you. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree with Dude, the, you're I so agree. ignorant. I agree with what I said. How is it ignorance? It's just an opinion. That's why I'm saying. You're Are ignorant. you saying opinions can't be ignorant? I'm saying that it's a subjective. Is what I'm saying. Uh huh. Um. Well, you're totally. Uh, we offered him a thousand dollars cash to sleep outside yeah. for forty-eight hours, two nights, yeah. and twenty bucks. That would have bought you a couple McDonald's meals, TJ. Probably more than that if you stretched out with the uh, dollar menu. Yeah, fuck that. The reason TJ can't do it is number one, the boredom would hit him first, and then the hunger. Hunger and that games. it would. That's what would happen. But, well, and and a double a double whammy from that is you eat when you're bored. You eat to escape boredom too. Yeah. So you would get bored, and you'd be like, "Fuck!" If I only had something to eat, you'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm so hungry now, and I'm bored." I know exactly how it would go. Yeah, that's a perfect segue. There's still a contest going on, a uh, competition. Draw Brett Keen and TJ madly in love. Uh, Paul Zigo has helped me out with this contest. Uh, the grand prize is 100 bucks on Amazon or PayPal or whatever. By the way... Uh, Just message Paul, uh, you're the picture, and uh, we're going to pick a winner when it seems like we found one. There, there were some pretty good ones so the far. The last contest that I did uh, has, has found its winner. You can go look at that on my Twitter. The uh, Josh Fierstein mind vagina picture. <laughs> there was a, a clear. There, there was, was a clear winner. There were some really good ones though. There, there was were one other there one were, that didn't win. That was just like a, a a portrait of his face. It looked like it was done in chalk or something. Yeah. And there was just this really detailed pussy on his face, drooling <laughs> spiritual jizz out of it. It's hard which, to you know. it's hard to pick sometimes in those contests because you do get a lot of good uh, options, but. Uh, yeah, that one was a little too X-rated to share here on the show, but you can go look at it on my Twitter. Let's um, talk about the meetup yeah, we, here in Columbus, Ohio. Paul will be there. Scotty will be there. Ben will be there. I will be there. Stevie yeah, will be Stevie's there. Stevie's going to be there. Arnold Schwarzenegger's going to make an appearance. Huh. That'd be pretty sweet. But Arnold's no. going Arnold's <laughs> to be there, maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, you don't know. It could happen. So right now, we got 132, and we only we only put this out for people to RSVP uh, two weeks. What was it, two weeks ago? Not even. Oh, no, no, one week ago. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's going to be 16-bit uh, bar and arcade, Columbus, Ohio. Great place. Uh, it's going to, it's like a, yeah, and uh, it's going to be from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's a retro. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. It's a retro arcade slash bar with free-to-play games. And uh, we'll be there from 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. And then at 8 p.m., 
if you're not old enough to have made it to the bar, because it is 21 plus, come meet us for pizza at Mikey's Late Night Slice, right next door to the 16-bit bar. And who knows what'll happen after that? Fuck, man. Who fucking knows? Who knows? Yeah. Maybe we'll just go all night. Maybe, Maybe we'll be raging like someone. a motherfucker all night. Who knows? All right. So, yeah, RSVP. If you're one of the people in the interested category and you're coming, change that shit. Yeah, let us know. Go up to where it says interested up at the top and change that to going. Going. You better go, you fucking piece of shit. Now let's talk about the shirts. Shirt time. Shirts, dude. Shirts and stickers. They're all there one, for you purchasing power. One powers. hour remaining on the TJ is garbage shirt. Yeah, a bunch of these shirts are they're going bye-bye. You're not going to see them again. So this is literally your last chance for a, a few of these shirts if you ever want to get them. Yeah, like Ban Scotty is yep. two. There's one hour remaining on it. Yep. And I know for a fact Scotty retired. doesn't like that. Yeah. One, so that shirt will never be sold again. It's your last fucking chance. It is. And only you live viewers even get that chance. The people who watch this pre-recorded, you're just fucked. There's stickers, too. There are stickers. Smoke pan every day. Dinor stickers. General Drunken Peasants sticker. Probably be some more stickers coming up soon as well. I'm, I'm looking forward to being like downtown here in San Antonio and seeing one of those Dinor stickers stuck somewhere, man. If anyone else lives in San Antonio, buy a bunch of Dinor stickers and make Paul's dream come true. Yes. All right. So uh, we're going to talk about this, and this is going to help us segue into the first thing that we're going to talk about on the show today. All right. So, yeah, this is our fundraiser. We've raised $747 for 40 contributors. This is uh, the Drunken Peasants DMCA Defense Fund. I'll go ahead and read this uh, little description to you again. Twice now in recent months, YouTubers have filed false DMCAs of our fair use of their content. When these DMCAs happen, YouTube cripples our channel for 10 to 14 business days during their agonizingly long review process. It is impossible for us to do a live streaming show when anyone with a grievance can shut down our streaming and long upload capabilities for a half a month at a time by filing erroneous legal claims that they have no intention of actually pursuing. It has become it's become obvious to us that the only way we can defend ourselves from such attacks is to take legal action against anyone who dares to use this disgusting censorship tactic against us. Any and all money raised for this fund will be put into an account whose sole purpose is defending ourselves against false DMCA claims, as well as taking other actions to secure the sustainable future of our intellectual property. Not a dime of what you give us will be used for any other reason or purpose. And, uh, uh, a couple of people have, have and, and I think you cleared this up the first time you read it, the other stuff is going to be stuff to protect us from attacks on the channel, DMCA protection, that sort of thing. DDoS or protection not, yeah. Yeah, as well. DDoS, yeah, yeah, DDoS protection. Yeah, just other, you know, basically just a fund to help us deal with the various hiccups of doing this channel. Yeah, to make sure the content stays online where <clears throat> it belongs. Yeah. And uh, obviously, this is completely, I mean, obvi you know it's optional, but it is optional to give to us. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I wanted to address some criticism coming from... Um, Before you get into that, one other thing I want to say. Go ahead. Uh, one of the main individuals that has false DMCA'd us in the past and actually use it as a tool to shut us up and let it last the, the absolute maximum amount of time... Uh, so that our channel was crippled for about two weeks. He has raised almost $20,000. So. <laughs> yeah, on that event. Yeah. Because he de false DMCA'd us, he got to raise $20,000. Right. <laughs> Um, well, he, we, we all know he's not blowing it. He's just fucking. I mean, not blowing. It, he's just blowing the money on bullshit. He's not fucking using it for any legal defense or to fight liberalism as he claims. Yeah, pay my rent. Gotta fight. Gotta pay my rent before I can fight liberalism. Um, this is uh, Richard the Dick Coughlin. Uh, you, you old school YouTubers might remember him, but uh, probably not even you. Uh, does anyone actually believe one penny of this will go towards anything other than TJ's guts? 
Also, didn't TJ make several videos about how greedy Sarkeesian is for crowdfunding? This from a guy who collects YouTube ad revenue and has a Patreon and now has this legal fund, in quotes. All right, so uh, let me just break that down piece by piece for everybody. Does anyone actually believe one penny of this will go towards anything other than TJ's gut? Well, as I said before, all of the, this money goes to a legal defense account, uh, also DDS mitigation account. Uh, just an account that the money is set aside to fucking protect our show. It's not part of our daily operations, and we don't know when these sort of events will come up. So we just want some money set aside for that. And obviously, we don't just expect our fans to pay for it. Uh, we would put up our own money as well, but... Uh, obviously, um, it's kind of difficult when any random person can fucking well, financially butt rape you. It's, it's sort of false equivalence. I mean, the, the reason you criticized Sarkeesian was because she already had a huge amount of money available to her. Well, I'm getting to that one. Okay. Also, didn't TJ make several videos about how greedy Sarkeesian is for crowdfunding? And, you know, you, you could take this one because you pretty much know what I'm going to say, I think. Okay, I mean, she. we saw conclusively in her Form 990 that she had about $384,000 left over at the end of 2014. We know she continuously fundraises, so she has the money. TJ was criticizing her because he already he's, he's saying she already has the money to do this. She doesn't need to fundraise. Yeah, and plus she's saying she's, she needs $200,000 to fund a the post-production only of, like, five YouTube videos. I mean, what is she fucking getting industrial lights and magic to work on this fucking thing? Uh, anyway, this from a guy who collects YouTube ad revenue and has a Patreon and now has this legal fund. I mean, this legal fund is not a source of revenue for me. This, uh, this legal fund is, it's not a legal fund, really. It's more of like a legal account. Yeah, it's a, or, it's a legal uh, defense fund. That's what it is. But it's, it's also for DDoS mitigation and anything else that could potentially come up. Uh, yeah, this isn't going to be used to go to Las Vegas or some shit like that. I mean, this is what he's basically getting at. It's just, oh, she is just going to eat. It's just like, oh, yeah. you know, more money. She just wants more money, okay, more money, more we'll, money. Well, Clawful, I can prove you wrong on one account. Okay, he does the show with fucking three other people. So you think even if we were just going to keep the money, all $700 of it at this point, that TJ would just get all of it? I mean, come on. At least if we're going to be scamming, at least everyone's going to get a fucking cut. It's yeah, like TJ's... Cut everybody in. You know what I mean? So even if that was what was going on... I it wouldn't just be TJ. I use the money I get from the show to buy food so I can cook it for TJ. And then it yep. goes straight to his fucking Oh, guy. okay. So, well, at least Ben shares from <laughs> TJ's the, guy. I mean, the larger point here is that this, this is not a source of revenue because this income isn't being treated as revenue. It's going, every fucking dime that is given to this is going into our legal fund. Yeah, we're That's actually, why we explained clearly and succinctly the exact reason why this money is being raised. Yeah, we're even going to put in a, a different account. It's not going to be with any of our other business money. All right, so here's uh, some responses from his people. This first person is, uh, have you ever noticed that there are professional YouTubers who are far less popular than TJ who manage just fine without constantly tapping their audience for donations? Uh, you don't constantly tap your audience It's almost donations. as though he hasn't got a fucking clue how to manage his finances. Okay, so... I haven't raised money on my channel for myself in ages, first of all. Um, and this is not... I mean, you're, you're basically arguing from a false premise here. The false premise being that this is just another way for us to make some money. So we'd be like, yeah, you know, vacation time, party time, gonna get me a new motorcycle or whatever. Um... You know, that's, 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 that's a false fucking place to start it from, first of all. It's almost like he hasn't got a clue how to manage his own finances. Uh, if, I, if I didn't have a clue how to manage my finances, $700 split fucking four ways isn't going to fucking solve my problems, all right? So, you're silly. Yeah, here's the, nec uh, here's the next slide. We'll go a little bit further into this shit. You know, if he made original content instead of being a parasite on other people's work, he'd never face this issue. Look, I am all for fair use, but it is also apparent that TJ is nothing if he isn't reacting to something. He is incapable of original thought. Interestingly, Dick Coughlin actually uh, disagreed and came to my defense on this one, uh, basically saying that, uh, you know, 
certain people are at their best reacting to stuff. Dick Coughlin char characterizing himself in that, um, you know, um, under that umbrella. So I, I pretty much agree with the defense that he actually made oh, for me. So, so you've taken some, I mean, numerous times, news articles and made videos basically based upon the information you read. So, that, yeah, you, you reacted to something, but it wasn't like you just wrote another piece that's the exact same piece. Yeah, are, are, they saying totally it'd be better, are they saying it'd be better if you just, like, made up your own stories and then reacted yeah. to them? <laughs> Hey guys, I mean, Amazing <laughs> Atheist here again with another original poem that I wrote myself. This one's called Rainbows. Yeah, no, that it, you know, everybody on YouTube, everybody that vlogs is reacting to something. Yeah, and uh, I think I think they're talking specifically about this podcast, you know, because of the whole DMCA issue being raised and stuff. Like, oh, we stole content from other people. It's like, that's just ridiculous. You know, watch... Oh. Watch a video they're, about fair use. They're so clearly or go biased. Read about it yourself. Well, they, no, they, they just hate us, so they're so, they're so clearly yeah. biased. They can't even be objective. Bloody mole! Bloody mole! We're not supposed to talk about the bloody mole, but there's a bloody mole winking me in the face. I'm going to chop it off and cut it up and make some guacamole. For those of you who don't know, Coughlin has a gigantic mole on his face. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll read one last one here. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, we'll see. I know that TJ threatened to sue a certain Uncle Tom racist douchebag named Tommy Sotomayor, and court in the U.S. is not fucking cheap. If he does sue these people, he could actually get quite a bit of money out of it. It's not not just for damages. Filing a false DMCA is highly actionable, both in criminal and civil court. That's actually a person pretty much agreeing with with what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, few problems with it, what they said, but nothing I really feel the urge to jump in and correct. Um... How much does it cost to defend yourself against false DMCA's? I bet it's more than 600 bucks, and they will claim they are getting a plethora of them. People will be feeding that fund forever. We don't have to claim it. Yeah, I mean, like, it, whenever it happens, we can easily demonstrate that it's happening. Uh, you know, you're a fucking idiot. Like, you don't... I love how you just wander into a situation you don't understand and still feel the need to, like, comment upon it anyway. Like, yeah! Well, they're, they, they can't remove the bias. It's like, they, they just don't like you, so it's just like, well, whatever you're doing is wrong. All right, well, I'll read one more of these fucking pieces of shit. I know we all have an idealized image of ourselves in our minds, but I think TJ is going a bit too far with his, where we all see a gelatinous glob that's been dropped on the floor of an Aryan's only hairdressers ranting about women being allowed outdoors without permission. He sees a Fabio Duke Nukem hybrid valiantly fighting against the evil that is feminazism. So... <laughs> so basically, I mean, like, this, this person's basically, oh, you, well, I guess they wrap it up. Gotta love those MRA egos. First of all, I'm not an MRA. Second of all, your characterization of me, I mean, like, whatever, your Aryans only hair, dry, I don't give a shit. But your characterization of me is someone who would be, like, incensed that women are allowed outdoors without permission. Just, like, even as hyperbole goes, it's fucking, like, a disgusting overstatement. Um, well, this this comment uh, reveals the true nature of, of Dick Coughlin's original gripe. This is about ideological difference. Um, if, if people cared enough about what Dick Coughlin was doing to DMCA his shit when he uses clips of other people's videos, he'd probably be doing the same thing. Uh, it just happens that nobody gives a fuck about what Dick Coughlin has to say anymore. <laughs> Uh, and so he's free from uh, okay. retards on the internet filing false uh, legal action against him because nobody cares. All right, I think that's pretty much yeah. uh, wraps it up for me. I don't think I could say anything else that uh, needs, that needs to be added. So, all right, time for a new segment that a lot of people uh, have told me that they enjoy. It's, it's and. Okay, I gotta be honest with you. Time to learn something. I mean, I think everyone kind of knows this, but when we first started doing this segment, it was a fucking joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, it's, like, become a weirdly legitimate segment. People are like, yeah! The information segment. This is just... I'm gonna read an article from Wikipedia, a random article. All right. Uh, fan beam antenna. A fan <laughs> beam antenna... 
is a directional antenna producing a main beam having a narrow beam width mm. in one direct dimension and a wider beam width in another dimension. This pattern will be achieved by a truncated paraboloid reflector or a circular paraboloid reflector. Since the reflector is narrow in the vertical plane and wide in the horizontal, it produces a beam that is I wide just, in the vertical plane and narrow in the horizontal. I just want to say that because I'm not an expert or even a novice at all in what you're talking about, this sa this makes about as much sense to me as Star Trek j jargon. The larger the antenna dimension, the narrower the beam. <laughs> Uh, uh, usage. It kind of makes more sense when you see the picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't see the picture. There's like pictures, yeah. Is it, it's, so it's it's like a transmission antenna? Um, it looks like it is, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right there. There's one. It says, uh, it's like searching for things. Yeah, you would Fan recognize beams antennas are used in radar sets. Oh, Primary okay. radar and airport have often fa fan beam with the section of antenna oriented horizontally to give a narrow beam in azimuth. That sounds like a fucking demon kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> we must go to azimuth. <laughs> they must be uh, complete complemented with a height finders, uh, have the beam orientated or orient oriented horizontally because they cannot locate the altitude. These have the reflect. They're basically fucking. They they fucking their radar shit. Here, there you go. See, and that's how they fucking work. And now, now you, know. now you know what the fuck's going on. You got the information, bitch. Learn something, bitch. Time to learn something. Yep. All right. It sure was interesting about them, whatever they were, antenna thing the jigs, <laughs> huh? Fan, fan, fan beam. beam. I thought it was fan beam. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I, yeah. <laughs> it's a troll? I've got two of them. Okay, the first one's a troll for sure. The second one, I'm you know, <laughs> certain. All right, here's the first one. This is for the rockin' meth heads. Okay. Oh, shit. You're making me pissed. <laughs> you say I have sex with my son? <laughs> and you say I have sex with my brother? Must turn you on. You keep watching my videos. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? And you say, you like my dry humping? Oh. <laughs> Not a troll. Let's, first of all, let's address this dry humping thing. Like what? What is this video? We have no to clue. More. Yeah. We have to go deeper. I must turn you on. Ow! <laughs> you want oh. some more? You say <laughs> you say I'm hostage? Yeah, well you're getting the spell right, asshole. It's math ease, not meth heads. But that's what you're calling yourself. Ow! No, I don't. I don't think they misspelled meth heads. <laughs> is that her? Uh, is that her signature thing? How? Yeah. Like Ow! A Ow! That's her thing online. Yeah. Ow! A lady. I mean, in all fairness to that, like the commenter, you do look like a meth head. You I'm know, gonna so. steal that. I like that so much. In all fairness, uh, I'm saying not a troll. Uh, yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with not a troll too. I think this is an actual method. Damn, I was wrong. All right, uh, second troll or not a troll of the night. Today I'm going to share with you guys a story. So last Thursday, my friend Molly invited me over. Uh, some of you guys might know who Molly is. What the fuck are you filming by a fan? I post a lot about her. <sighs> Yeah, but she's my best friend, and she invited me over for a girls' night. Um, so I went over there, oh, and girls we night. just watched Netflix. We painted each other's nails, we hung <clears throat> out, talked, <sighs> stuff, stuff like that. And we watched The 100, and we watched it till about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And Molly said that she was getting tired, so she said she was going to go to bed. And I said, okay, good night, you know, I'm going to stay up a little bit longer and finish the show. And um, so she went to bed. And her dog came up on the couch where I was. Oh God! <laughs> troll sounds like a troll. And and he went towards my crotch, 
and that kind of turned me on a little bit so I took off my shorts and I just laid there and watched the show and then her dog started to lick my vagina while I was watching the show. So that felt pretty good and that kind of turned me on a little bit. So of course I returned the favor and I gave her dog oral. I sucked her dog's dick <laughs> while she was asleep. And after that, one thing kind of led to another and I ended up having sex with Molly's dog in her living room while she was asleep. And I must have been moaning pretty loud because Molly ended up coming out and catching me and her dog in the act, having sex in her living room. And I was kind of nervous because I didn't know if she was going to be upset about it because I'm having sex with her dog. <laughs> but she wasn't. <laughs> okay, so I have some prior knowledge, so I'll have to recuse myself from this, uh, this troll or not a troll because I know the answer okay so you know 100 percent. okay i know for 100 percent certain it seems like answer. a troll well to me. i mean may maybe she's making this up but this chick does fuck dogs really yes yes so not she's, a troll. She's, she's, <sighs> yeah 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 she's not a troll okay this is the, she's a she's a porn star and there are videos of her um uh, fucking dogs that can be found <coughs> you should have let she them guess first i should what you should have let them guess first and then told them. Oh, well, shit. Anyway, so what what, what were you saying about it? Well, the, she she was recently embroiled in some drama with like a bigger YouTuber. She's a, she's a porn star. She's like a porn actress. And uh, this YouTuber Leafy is here. Anyway, he went out and found a bunch of videos of her actually fucking a dog. Um, so I'm it pretty does, sure that's illegal. Does it. it is illegal. Yes, yes, everywhere. I think. <laughs> I'm sure there's somewhere where it's not illegal, but it's not the type of place I want to go to. Let's see. I don't really care. If a so, chick wants to fuck a dog, like what's the what's the loss in that transaction for society? Like what how does society negatively impacted if this chick fucks a dog? Maybe that's what all the problems really stem from. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> dog fucking? Yeah. God has judged us, for we are a nation of dog fuckers. All right, so... Harlots fucking dogs in the open. Everyone make sure to catch the post show on SoundCloud. It'll be posted sometime after tonight's show. Uh, tonight, we're, I actually have a special video planned that we're going to watch. We're going to watch a video from, I think, like maybe like five years ago or so. Mm where Paul made a video and TJ just was like, that's the stupidest fucking video ever. And we're going to watch Paul's response to TJ's oh, response. Oh, I remember that shit. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a major drama. And, and then, then TJ, and, like, afterwards goes, I was just trolling to get Paul to make a video. I don't just think nullified that's... nullified the entire thing. So, so is that true? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Because uh, I was... I kept going to Paul's channel and I was like depressed because it was like eight or nine months since he'd made a video or something. And then I fucking, I don't remember how it started, but he made, he made some kind of comments about uh, Casey Anthony or whatever. Yeah. And I fucking like went after him about it. And then he got a, resp he responded to me and it was just, I don't know. It got him to make a couple of videos anyway. Yeah. It should be interesting. But he definitely won. He won, TJ. Yeah, he did. You suck. I always win. Wow. Paul's a winner. <laughs> Except for when he loses. Except for when I lose, yeah. Then yeah. I'm a loser. Best thing to do if you ever play Paul in a video game and you beat him, just refuse to play him in a rematch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just claim, just claim the championship for yourself and walk yep. away. It's... And and retire undefeated yep. with the championship. I do that to Scotty sometimes. This is great to do to him too. Scotty will get so pissed. Like if you beat him in a game, let's go again. It's like nah, tired of this game. What was the part of the game that was like? It was almost like Guitar Hero that Scotty couldn't finish. Oh yeah, that was in um God of War three. <laughs> right? There was this fucking part where like it turned into fucking Guitar Hero, but with way way shittier controls. 
Like, honestly, it wasn't hard to remember the sequence or no. to hit the right buttons so much as it was, like, it had to be down to the fucking, like, unforgiving Nat's ass perfect. And it was, like, really hard to figure out when exactly you're supposed to play it. Like, it, it was legitimately frustrating for a shit ton of people. They actually removed it from subsequent copies of the game because it was so bad. But, um... Scotty got more pissed at that than I think I've ever seen him like or at least as pissed as I've ever seen him about anything like Scotty was ready to like throw the fucking TV like outside in the front yard and smash the fucking PlayStation or whatever. I mean, he was fucking, like a raging fucking lunatic. <laughs> I just remember I remember him, I remember him say like and like tearfully like so mad he's crying. Like, it's not even fun! It's not even fun anymore! <laughs> Do they think this is a good fucking time? Fuck them! Yeah, I, I had tears of anger. Like, cause I, was, I literally wanted to, like, destroy the TV. Like, I think, like, several times he had to restrain me because I had to just run towards, like, the TV. Like, fuck this TV! Like, no, stop it! You're crazy! Yeah, so finally I'm like, don't worry. I'll beat this part. I'll beat this part. And I fucking... Stayed up, like, all night until I finally fucking beat that shitty, stupid part, and then, you know. My dad uh, is, is a lot like that. Like, he, he used to play Diablo when I was a teenager, the original Diablo. And he didn't know anything about the game. Like, so he didn't know what the enemies were called. He didn't know what the final boss was called. Like, he just, he, I'm playing Diablo. And I'd hear him at, like, 3 in the morning on a school night. And there was this one enemy in Diablo that would jump at you really quickly and make this hissing sound. And he called them piss cats. <laughs> and he would just scream at the piss cats. He'd be like, like at three in the morning, like, motherfucking piss cat! Every time! I'm trying to move! I can't move! You know what I mean? Like, so I, I know the impotent video game rage well. There's a little bit of it in me. I have a more quiet, smoldering, baby like anger, you know? Like, I, I just kind of get petulant and. And shitty, but yeah, I know. Yeah, the just rage. like fold your arms and you know pout in the corner or something. Where Scotty is way more of like a traditional hothead. So, dude, I've thrown so many controllers so many times. You're a real piece of shit, Scotty. I like how the whole time we've been talking, this do dog fucker has just been yeah, sighing like, over <laughs> us, just looking. To oh, dog fucker. Someone needs to write a song about the dog fucker chick. Yep, yep. I don't know hey, what genre it should be or anything. Maybe, maybe she could sleep with the winner of Bitch Boy Slap Fight. That'd be the grand prize. <laughs> the winner of Bitch Boy Slap Fight gets to lose his virginity to a chick that fucks dogs. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that works for me. That's that's a good prize. I think these guys would have slap fights over her. She looks like decent enough. Yeah, I'm right there. Well, you know, they're both virgins. Oh my god. I'm finally gonna get laid. Finally! You win your right to become a man by winning Bitch yeah. Boy right. Slap Fight. <laughs> Time to move on uh, to the political shit segment. Yeah. Political shit. It's shit that's political. We need a new one. We need Lack a new version of this with TJ's face, his shitty face, scalped. Yeah, bitch. What are you talking about? My beard's coming back. Yeah, <laughs> a few months, maybe maybe six months from now, TJ. <laughs> it's the nearly back. The cannot hide your shame, TJ. You know, if if it, if this hair on my face was actually dark, you would see how fucking far I actually am along. Oh, you're not very far along at all. I am so. No. Pastor Jim Baker is concerned about your bowel movements. So cool. Wild. Thanks. Welcome to the, uh. the Jim Baker Show. Here are your hosts, Jim and Lori Baker. Bonus buckets, bitch. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Gray Street. Hi there. So very happy to have you here. With we our very are. special guest, John Shorey, yes. is in the house. Great to be here. 
We, what is it with these conservative, like Christian types, looking like they just got back from quail hunting or something? <laughs> Every like, like, what is what is the is the hunting vest coming back in a real way? I love that that intro sounded almost like a fucking parody or something. The Jim Baker Show. Yeah. And the way he said Lori was weird. It was like Jim and Lori Baker. It's like almost like de-emphasize that bitch. It's about There's me, a, Jim. There's not a single person under the age of 70 in this audience. Look at this. Look at this fucking audience. You know, you know what's fucked up? Because these people are probably here for two, one of two reasons. Either they buy a bunch of his shit so they get invited to a special thing so they can buy more, or they paid money to go to his show and then are going to buy more. Okay, the thing that... The thing that Marvel, I'm, 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 I just think is remarkable is all these people, like Paul said, well into oh, their, all, all geriatrics, well into their fucking twilight years, and yet these are the people stockpiling food for the apocalypse. <laughs> it's like you're old. What do you even give a I shit? I need twenty years worth of food. You're not going to live twenty more years, Grandpa. What if I do? The world ends, and you want to eke out a few more years of life when you're fucking seventy-eight. Already? So I'm pretty sure they don't have dialysis in the fucking apocalypse, you know? I mean, come on. Yeah, like, as soon as the pharmacy stops filling your prescriptions, you're fucking dead. You're fucking dead! Come on. Well, a lot of them would be. Uh, obviously, some will survive, but yeah, the vast majority of these people would be toast. How long? Not... I mean, come on. Most of these people would probably die within six months to a year. You know, like, once the roving band of raiders gets together and it's like, look... The old ways are dead. You know, morality, that's a thing of the past. Now it's time to just make our, help our gr own group survive at all costs. Let's go uh, to that old man Peterson's house, because I heard he's got a bunch of them fucking bonus buckets got in like there. 100 bonus <laughs> buckets. That's enough food to last us a while. That'll fuel a lot of raping and killing and pillaging. So let's go fucking uh, put a bullet between old man Peterson's eyes and take them fucking bonus buckets. And that's that's like what happens in the event of the apocalypse uh, happening. Which I don't know why you, you even think you would survive the apocalypse in the first place. Like, most people are going to die, right? You know, so what makes you think you're going to be the fucking survivor that, you know, has any need for this fucking food to stay alive longer? Oh, but right now there's also bonus shovels. So you can make it. It's even easier now. Now, to, you, you could dig your family's grave with our bonus <laughs> shovel. Right. You know, I have enough food probably for 15 years. Yes, we right. do. But with 15 all my family, years. I don't know. You know, you don't know who all is going to show up. Yes. And who you're going to have to take care oh, of. Oh, my God. Okay, Jim Baker does not eat from a fucking giant bucket that no. you can use as a fucking end table. Dude, look right? at the fear tactics. You know, you never know who's gonna show up. So even if you bought some bonus buckets, you might want to buy some more. And I hate to say no to people when they're starving to death. These buckets can be used, like if you live in the city, they're gonna be. People are eating stuff from these buckets. Yeah. People in the crowd That's are eating stuff from these there. fucking buckets. It's like, yeah, free meal. Just got to listen to this stupid fucking presentation. Yep. And they're like, you know what? Maybe the world could end. <sighs> a a, a portageon for you to you. That is the potato soup. Yeah, wait, he wait, said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He literally just said that after you're done eating the, the contents, you can start using them to shit in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That what is what's said. Tool. <laughs> I know. With mashed potatoes, and then when you finish eating the mashed potatoes, you just fill them back up with the <laughs> shit you created with the mashed potatoes. Man. Like, does this look, look the least shit. bit appetizing That's here? Stopped. It looks like something they feed pigs on a factory farm. Just like... <laughs> it's the that was actually pretty good. It's the tax. Sure, it's the flavor. Can you all see it's, the, the texture and flavor that looks like looks fucking like, gruel. It looks like vomit. Eat your fucking gruel, dude. What the fuck, really? It looks like Paul just ate a bunch of soup and then puked in that fucking bucket. <laughs> it's, like, it's like some shit they would give to like 16th century peasants. Like, here you go, here's some fucking slop so you can stay alive to work the fucking fields, surf. This is like all the fucking potato skins that are discarded in America just like blended up and fucking stuffed into a bucket.
I gotta try oh my, my god, look at all those fucking living fossils. That's so good. This is so good. <laughs> oh, you fucking lying, disgusting look, scumbag. Look, look at Jim Baker choke his fucking slop. Mm, so he good. doesn't normally eat that shit. Mm. Of course he does. And she's like, this bitch, like, Lori or whatever, like, mm, uh, it's so good. It's so good. Ugh. She fucking, I, she probably goes back at stage, like, directly uh, after the show and, like, purges. Like, oh. Oh. Do you like the flavor? Awesome. The flavor is amazing. <laughs> it's the flavor, awesome. yes. Yes, everybody, you heard it here. The flavor of a bucket of slop is downright fucking amazing. So good. It's oh, it's so it's the seasoning. I want to get fucking. Uh, I want someone to corner Gordon Ramsay and give him shit from these bonus oh, buckets. Oh my god, that would be. I fucking want him amazing. to just like tear them apart. It'd be so awesome. Please, someone try to fucking get Gordon Ramsay to do that. Gordon Ramsay needs to respond yeah, to this you know, shit. Let's fucking send Gordon Ramsay a bonus bucket and be like, yeah, review if, this. If anyone knows Gordon Ramsay's address, we we'll, you know we need we want to send him some bonus buckets and encourage him to respond I, to them. I, I, I'd rather die naked in the apocalypse than purchase a bucket of this inedible slop. <laughs> it would be something like that, but probably louder. Quality food. I mean, look at all the cream in this thing. It the cream? Totally the cream? As a selling oh. point? Here's a fucking bucket that you might be keeping around for 20 fucking years. There's cream in it. Uh, like... <laughs> <laughs> We right. have all these people here. Yes, we do. And people. <laughs> wow, yeah. They look riveted. Yep. They look like they're having they're the still... time of their fucking lives. They look so excited to be there and to be alive, you know? Yeah. <laughs> people. In... Another thing that starts with P. People. Who? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? When they pee and they. We won't say the other word, okay? What are you going to do with the doo-doo? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is such what an awkward conversation. It's look like, at the look on his fucking face. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do? You got to do something. You got you to go somewhere. Do -do. No more toilets. You know, you, you got to do it. Got to do it. Uh -oh. oh, where are you going to go in the apocalypse? Where are you going to go, man? Yeah, I'm gonna be looking for a bucket, probably. I <laughs> That's mean... damn right. You're gonna want a big. You're gonna want a big bucket. Yeah. And then after you're done shitting in it, you can just put the lid back on and use it as an end table. People eat, oh and people mess. go to the bathroom. Okay, eliminate. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Someone has someone has clearly like edited edited this. Oh yeah, yeah. funny, but this is great. I mean, it would have been funny on its own, I'm sure, in context. But <laughs> this is obviously highlighting the ridiculousness. Right. Wow. <laughs> Give that Jim. That's yeah. nasty. <laughs> well, it is. what do you mean it's nasty? Oh brother. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. Wow, what a what a raucous good time yeah. they're having on the Jim Baker on the shilling show uh, you know, on the fear mongering program. This is like, I mean, like these. I mean, this is literally just like an infomercial for these disgusting buckets. Like, is anyone buying these fucking buckets? Um, I'm sure someone is. I hope to fuck no one is actually buying. I these bet buckets, you. Man. I bet you the people in this fucking audience there. Has. This oh, is yeah, gonna, dude. dude I feel like I feel like the, the, as gullible as my parents are becoming as they get older and shit. My mom and my stepdad, like I feel like in thirty years they're gonna be buying like the bonus buckets or some equivalent. And I'm gonna be like, yeah, that was a good decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't think older so. Older people are pretty susceptible to this type of shit. Like my mom's not as old as the people in this in this audience, but like our little town moved to like metered water. Uh, a couple of years ago, and my mom had heard these wild fantasies that like your water bill's gonna quadruple, like they're gonna they're gonna track every ounce you use, you know. And so my mom was literally like, I went over to her house one day, and she's like, I, I needed to take a shower or something. I don't remember why I couldn't shower at my house, and she was like, Oh, honey, well just move the bucket out of out of the shower. And I was like, well, Okay. And there's this bucket filled with like soapy, dirt, dingy water in there. 
And so I moved it out and took a shower and I came back out and I asked her like, what was the bucket mom? And she goes, well, I'm just reusing my shower water. Cause I don't want to pay them so much for the metered water. Oh. And I was like, are you fucking serious? You're she's like, well, yeah, just look, just soap. And I was like, yeah, soap and all the dirt and BO that comes oh. off of your body. Uh, like so I finally got her talked out of using her own soapy water to rebathe herself and you know her water bill is actually normal and 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 the same as it always was. Damn. So man. yeah, I think older people tend to be a little Why, uh, what what is that? Why what is the what is with the increased gullibility? I, I mean, you'd figure, like, like yeah, after that, you'd figure they'd be like, man, I've been around a just, block so many times, I know all the tricks. Just look at the type of ads that they play on TV, like, during the daytime, you know, when they're playing, like, one of the, like, 20 different court shows that I they do, have. I have watched that shit before. Yeah. So, you know. You know, it, 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 they're geared towards elderly, unbelievably gullible people. Was their entire generation just this stupid, or is yeah. it something that happened over time? Over know? time. I mean, what is the deal? They're just, like, so fucking senile that they just don't even know what's going on. Except for when it comes to, like, technology, because they obviously didn't grow up with technology the way we're used to it now. I mean, Jim so, Baker's pretty much as old as these fucks, and he's still smart enough to pull the wool over all their eyes. I'm sure he's got people working with him. Yeah. I mean, he certainly does. He always did. Good guy, Jim Baker. Good guy. All right, next one. Glenn Beck claims Ted Cruz chewed out his staff for allowing him to appear at anti-gay rally. Oh, yeah, chewed him out. Okay. Right before we started recording that, my daughter walks out of her house. She lives next door. She walked out of her house because everybody was in the... Oh, my God. I mean, it's bad enough that Glenn Beck's your dad, but you have to live next door to him, too, after uh, you're old uh. enough to move out. Uh, Man, I thought my double chin was bad. <laughs> like, you know, 400 people were in the yard. He's almost getting to George and, uh, Lucas levels he's like, here. like, hey, Dad, just another yeah. day at the Beck house. And uh, I said, you haven't, you haven't met Senator Cruz yet, have you? And she said, no. And then she looked at me because she knew what I was going to do. And, and she's, she beat red. And she's like, no, Dad, I know. He looks like fucking Pa Kent here. <laughs> the fuck is? I mean, like you know, he he kind of resembles uh, Benjamin Franklin. Almost. Yeah, I can see that too. Uh, With, one insult to Benjamin Franklin. I mean, just one insult. Just the fat face and those ridiculous fucking. Spectacles it wasn't an insult wearing. though when you said that like all people named Benjamin are are inherently evil people. Well, though, Benjamin right? Franklin gets in a pass. Oh, I see. He was, he's on the $100 bill. Come on. It's one of the good ones. Oh, Please good don't. Ones. No hypocrisy. And I said, no, you should hear it from him. She has been asking me to ask because all of her friends, all of her New York friends are all like, look at this homophobic bigot. He speaks at this, some church in Ohio where that guy, have you seen this video? It's horrible. This guy comes out and he's like, I think that. I'm not saying that they should be sown to death. I'm just saying God says that homosexuals. It's the guy that opened for him, right? Yeah, it was crazy, and and actually, from what I understand, it. Yeah, you, you're outraged. The, the dude at the desk. Every time I see him, it's just like the <laughs> poker and the skull and the weird plaid shirt. Like he's trying to look like Glenn. Uh. Dude, TJ, you're Glenn, and Paul's your desk guy. You be the desk guy, Paul. You need to get a skull. <laughs> Get a skull and a bad comb over. Stat. I want a skull. <laughs> Paul, get a skull. That would be pretty cool if Paul had a skull. He does. He, he does. Skull. It's just covered with flesh at this no, point. No, no, I yeah. mean like, like a skull on his like desk or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, man. I have, I have the skull of Diablo on my desk. That's oh, Diablo's shit. Skull. Sweet. Yeah, Paul does have a skull. It's not so displayed enough, though. Yeah. You need to like, put it on a pedestal way. behind you it and says shine I a big light on it. It says I want your skulls on the back of my shirt. It does. That's yeah. true. Is that a misfit? Misfits. There it is, dude. He didn't open. He said it like the day before. Oh. And, uh, and so Ted wasn't even there and didn't know this guy. So anyway, my, my daughter comes up and I said, no, you should hear it from him. I didn't know the answer. He I have no idea what's going on in this story cuz he's just doddering along he like just like blah, 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 I guess blah, 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 okay, blah, blah. I guess it was at some event, right? That Ted Cruz was about to speak at. Okay. And the guy that cuz they always have someone to like warm up the crowd yeah. as as you saw at the Bernie rally. Sure. Um and I guess this guy was like 
his his rhetoric against homosexuals was so bad that it even offended Glenn Beck. Okay. I think that's what he's getting at. All right. He was going to give. And I said, I had been saying to her for a couple of months that I was going to ask him, and I keep forgetting. And I said, but, you know, I want to look him in the eye, as he says, and you'll be able to tell. So I say, come with me, because you need to judge. And so I said, Ted, my daughter has a question, and she's beat red, and she's like, well, that, you know, that, that speech you gave right before the preacher immediately he knew what it was and he said okay first of all that guy was reprehensible reprehensible he said honest and ted cruz immediately immediately he assured her that actually he doesn't agree with her on anything and everything's fine much like a politician would do in that situation it's like yeah, of course. If she comes with like, Ted, we, you, you, you know, you opened for that preacher, and then he preached, like, hate speech and shit, and he's like, oh, well, you know, I didn't know he was going to do that, and I think he Whoops. was a piece of shit, honestly. Yeah, I guess the guy said that gays should be stoned to death or whatever. But uh, Ted Cruz isn't, uh, Ted Cruz himself is not going to come out and be like, that guy was reprehensible. Instead, we're going to hear a secondhand account from Glenn Beck about what he said. All right. Sounds good. Sleep. It's one of the only t This is like an old fucking conservative trick, honestly. They used to do this shit where, with, like, George W. Bush. He'd say some, like, crazy hardcore right-wing shit, but then, like, Laura Bush or someone else would have some story about, like, behind closed doors, don't worry. He, he knows that's stupid. So don't you worry. That's just a lot of talk. Times I, have I mean, someone's getting fucking lied to here. Pretty much out. everyone. How did you not know who this guy was? How did you not know that guy was going to say that? He said, I was there. Other candidates were there. He said, I can't, I can't say that I wasn't there because I did. I will tell you that not only did I not know that, I think that was absolutely reprehensible bigoted, despicable, I want nothing no, he doesn't. to do with him. No, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah Ted Cruz? Ted Cruz really? launched into this big speech about how he was so offended by the, the fucking preacher saying, like, homosexuals should be um, stoned Ted to death. Ted Cruz the same guy that said, like, God's first, you know, the Bible's first, but above the Constitution, above everything else, God comes first. There's no way Ted Cruz later in private was like, no, never mind, that's not how I feel. Him or any kind of uh, alliances to people like that and he was really strong and I looked at her and she's like okay good I, yeah. I'm, I'm cool with that I'm so glad Ted is on the right side he won over Glenn Beck's daughter and in the process he won me over too yep Paul's ego for Cruz well, like that shit even fucking happened it's yeah, like this Glenn's stupid really... fucking yeah go ahead He's really committed to painting Cruz as some kind of messiah figure that was anointed by God or something. So anything bad that Cruz has done, like, I don't know, speaking at a place with a known, like, ravenous anti-homosexual bigot at it. Like, he didn't just accidentally stumble in there. Right. Like, he, he knew what the fucking guy was going to say before he went, and he went anyway. And he told uh, Glenn Beck's probably slightly liberal daughter what she needed to hear. You know, uh, someone told me that Ted Cruz has the most punchable face in human history, and I thought it was just because they didn't like Ted Cruz. But now, er every time I see him now, I think there may be some actual science. No, he does that. have a very punchable face. <clears throat> Speaking as someone who doesn't necessarily punch people all the time, but thinks about punching people right. all the time, when I see him, I do have that visceral reaction of like, man, I'd like to clock that dude right in his he, fucking he doesn't ugly even, rat face. He doesn't even look like a person. He looks like a caricature of, of a person. Yeah. That's the oh, way he I does. feel too. I don't think it's I don't think his face is altogether like punchable. But yes. he looks like a, he looks like a minor villain from like Dick Tracy or something like <laughs> bring, in, bring, in, bring in Teddy the stool pigeon. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Teddy the stool pigeon. I didn't see nothing. Except for what I saw last night at the bank job. Wink wink nudge nudge say no more. Like he looks like some kind of fucking makeup character. Like it looks like his face isn't a real face. It looks like he's got some kind of prosthetic chin and fake pointy nose to make him look more weaselly. It's strange.
Yeah, I agree. He he, he has a rat. He has a ratty, weaselly face. Yep. He he has weird features too, like really long ears. His ears are like really long, and his nose like. I don't know. It's it, I. I don't know. I don't it's know. Not, how and else it's to not. And it's not a. It's it. not like a Cuban yeah. thing or anything. No. no. It, it's no, like no, not at all. I didn't even know he was Cuban at first. Yeah, he just doesn't. Like no one looks like that except for uh, McCarthy. McCarthy did look like that as well. He looks like a caricature of McCarthy. Yeah, he looks like someone like, doing like McCarthy in like a stage production or something. Well, or, or you know, you know how there are like the political cartoonists and they draw like the really yeah. exaggerated, like a caricature. It, yeah, 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 that's what that's what Cruz looks like a, a caricature of of McCarthy, basically. Well, let's take a look at this fuck. Which fuck? Do we have Ted Cruz? Uh. Pfft. No, but I can pull up a picture of him if we want to just talk yeah. about how we want to punch him. Yeah, let's. I want to. I want to reference it because I want to feel like I want to fucking kind of like gauge the punchability when I'm actually looking at him. It's a good thing to do, you know. How punchable Game. is Ted Cruz on a scale from one to ten? I just go to images. Yeah. He's got the, like the least genuine looking smile too. He's got the oh, smile yeah. like oh, every time God. he smiles it looks like a man that like is waiting to fuck you in the ass as soon as you turn around. Like I do have to disagree yeah, with how, you. How though. you doing, yo? I do have to disagree with you on one point. Will Wheaton has a more disingenuous smile. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All There's the a, times in Star Trek where he had to pretend like he was happy about something. Watch an episode called The Game, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. And there's a part where he, like, flashes someone a smile in a hallway, and I swear it looks like something out of a fucking horror movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... Oh, my God. He's just like, what, what the fuck is this? I don't know, dude. This Everything is not a human him. being's face, for fuck's sake. This is not a human face. I don't know what the fuck this creature is, but it's like just trying to pass as human, and it's not even doing that good of a job. He's got beautiful chestnut eyes, though. Like, oh my god! <laughs> just, just sparkling, full of vibrancy. Oh yeah, so vibrant. All right, uh, next one is uh, Jones blasts psychotic cult leader Glenn Beck. So this is Alex Jones, who doesn't like Glenn Beck, even though they both buy into a lot of the same wacko conspiracy theories. Yeah, well, that 2% they disagree on right. really drives a wedge. That's what really divides them. The cult leader, Glenn Beck, I mean, he, he <laughs> is now an official religious cult leader, and this, he's the false prophet, and his messiah is uh, Ted Cruz. You know, he comes out and says that Drudge is anti-Christian now, and I'm crazy, and that I've diseased Drudge's mind as, I, as if I have any influence, and that he's not a good source of information anymore because Glenn Beck said so. Uh, what? Ask okay, I love, I love how this election, I, I love how th in this election cycle we, we have, like, these two conservatives champ, like, that are, that are like, known for being, like, batshit crazy. Dude, two fucking nut jobs just fighting it. I'm not crazy, he's crazy. I'm not crazy, and he's they're both, crazy. They're both fighting over, like, which candidate they like better, you know? Yeah. And it's just, it's great because they're both like batshit crazy and you would think they would just agree, but because of this one disagreement, they can like come to no sort of compromise whatsoever and just like, you're fucking, he's a cult leader. I haven't heard Glenn fire back at Alex Jones though. I've only heard Alex Jones talking shit about Glenn Beck. I do like the description too. It's like, Glenn Beck, officially a cult leader. Like he, 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 they fucking mail this packet in. It's like, no, I'm officially a cult leader. You know, it's like, come on. Join the Glenn Beck Society. Game admittedly makes you go blind. It's in Diet Coke and thousands of other products. It's been proven. It's admitted. It turns into wood alcohol. It, and, uh -huh. and, and Beck said he was going blind. So I wrote a story and had all the medical links to it with Paul Watson a few years ago and sent it to Beck and sent it to Drudge. And Drudge linked to it under the story about Beck going blind, trying to help him. And Glenn Beck made fun of Trying to help him? Um, so you sent something to Drudge, and then they posted it immediately, but you have no influence on what happens on the Drudge report? So wait a minute, yeah, it's like, huh? you claim to have no 
influence over Drudge, yet you were able to just post stuff on Drudge. Or just, you know, like, yeah, here, Matt, post this. And you say that these two links were posted close together to help Glenn Beck. Like, here you go, this is why you're going blind. Even though I'm not a doctor or a medical person and I haven't looked at your case or anything like that, I'm pretty sure this is it. My Diet Coke theory. Here you go. Like, why wouldn't you just give that to him personally, even if that was your, 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 your working theory? I mean, like, you guys definitely travel in some of the same circles. I'm sure you could get that information to him if you really needed to without publishing it on the Drudge Report. Like, you're basically saying, like, we posted on the Drudge Report specifically so that Glenn Beck would see it. Like, we published it on one of those popular sites on the Internet specifically so one guy would see it, maybe. I mean, come on. So we could help him. That on air and said we were idiots the next day. That's uh -huh. the type of cynical, twisted weirdo, I guess Kurt Nemo wrote it, that we're dealing with here. I know the inside baseball on Beck. I'm not going to get into it, but he'll end up destroying himself. I mean, he is a egomaniac, super narcissist, probably psychotic in my view. <laughs> probably a psychotic. And <laughs> he's insane and wants yes, to be a cult yes. leader. Yes. Also, this description works for you, Alex. <laughs> the, I the irony never dawns on Alex Jones when he calls other people insane that he's one of the craziest fucking people on the planet. And Drudge has shown that. And so now he's anti-Christian. See, if you don't support the prophet, Moses has returned. You didn't know? In fact, the two prophets of Revelation, it's, it's Ted Cruz and Glenn Beck. You didn't know? That is a good point against Glenn Beck, actually. He does... He does basically act as if Ted Cruz has been literally anointed by God to be president. He says he's a uh, priesthood he's starting. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> the liberal hardcore shock jock that was hired right before 9-11 and gotten ready to come out to be the synthetic Alex Jones? I mean, I've been told that by the executives involved. Okay, I don't think anyone's been disputing, told, okay. disputing that, yeah, Glenn Beck, that, that is his past, and he is trying to push that uh, that narrative, but, I mean, look at Alex, what Alex Jones is doing. It's like he has no self-awareness. No, it's like, like Paul said, it's just the definition of irony. It's like, you're crazy. It's like, uh, what? I mean, Alex Jones just said that Glenn Beck, the reason Glenn Beck went from being a shock radio, shock jock to being a conservative uh, talk, sh talk pundit or whatever radio host was because some establishment dudes are like, we need a watered down Alex Jones. That's what we need. We need an Alex yeah. Jones, but one that we can control. Yeah. It, it's like, it, it, it just never dawns on Alex. He's like, He's like, yeah, yo, Glenn Beck's fucking insane. He's fucking crazy. He's a, he's a lunatic, probably a psychopath. All right, up next here on the Alex Jones Show, uh, are, are Obama's balls literally two demons, and does he ejaculate lava? We've got some, we've got some experts coming on with some compelling evidence that he did indeed comes lava. Our you skills I mean? making you gay. You know, another problem with the whole fucking uh, narrative he's spewing here is that if Glenn Beck is supposed to be the easy to control Alex Jones, then why did he go so batshit crazy that even Fox News wanted nothing to do with him? Where they sat, and he's an actor, and watched weeks of my videos and shows and said, take this and mix it with Oprah. That's what I was told by the executives that used to run his operation. He's a mixture of Oprah Winfrey and Alex Jones. What? All in a big, Oprah weird, Winfrey? dope body. I don't see the Oprah. No, not well, at where all. Where is that? Yeah. Like, I don't even see a shred of Oprah and Alex no. Jones. The Glenn Beck Reading Club. Uh, Oprah used to give shit away to her audience. Glenn Beck makes his audience sit in, like, two rows of chairs with, like, a fucking big hardwood studio back wall right fucking behind Fuck them. Fuck that. They have hard chairs, and it's like, you signed a contract to sit here for eight hours, but you can leave any time as long as you make a $1,000 or greater donation. <sighs> It done. I guess it's done. A cult. Oh no, it's not. Nope. Did he freeze. Hey, Jesus Christ. What's up with all these dramatic pauses? <laughs> yeah, yeah. High priest. Jones, 
Alex Jones always does that. He's the he's the master of the lingering pause when he's about to say something really. You're relevant. the fucking leader of conspiracy theories, Alex Jones. Like uh, every little conspiracy fucking conspiracy on the internet, fucking cozies up to someone like you or like Mark Dice or somebody. There's always like there's a few of you guys that just air all you guys love. Oh, you're telling it like it is. You're telling the truth. You're a fucking huckster just like the rest. But of the them. problem is, all of them come around to fucking rejecting everyone else who like has a show like this. Like Dave sold out. Dave bought into the system. That's like what Vigilant Christian thinks. Like he started off as like, oh, Alex Jones is going to show me the truth. But then when he got too deep into it, he's like, you know what? Alex Jones is a conspiracy well, They all want to be the prophet. Oh, that's a false prophet. I'm the real prophet. That's all it is. They, they want to be the one telling you the real truth. Um, I got a unique inside track to the tr to profound truths that you need to know. Pregnant Scared pause. to death, by the way. Scared to Dozens death. of security people. And he thinks he can dictate what happens and who operates. And now Ted Cruz comes out and demonizes the Drudge Report. Oh, no. Okay. All right, Alex. Good luck with that anti-Beck crusade, man. Yeah, the sky is falling. Glenn Beck is, Glenn Beck is horrible. Guys. This one says, David Barton will train Christians to take control of the government. <clears throat> Sweet. Karis Bible College, already an excellent school for training, will now add a new strand of training. It'll be a brand new school. It's a school of practical government. Government? So many other colleges and universities already have schools of government, so why Karis? I mean, we don't have to be like everybody else. That's right. But did you notice the difference in the name? This is not a school of government. This is a school of practical government. The emphasis oh. is... Oh, right. I'm going to yeah. guess religious practical government. <laughs> oh, practical is a stand in for religious. Um, yeah, it's like you can't just add practical to something bad yeah. and then make now it's good. I mean, listen, you know, guys, I, listen, guys, I cooked up some shit, <laughs> but wait, but wait, it's creamy shit. So, <sighs> you know, like if you like creamy stuff, come on down. Paul, like, I'm going to stab like, you in the face. But don't worry, what? it's going to be a practical it's just, stabbing. Okay, yeah, it's just yeah. appealing to infantile fucking morons who are just like, practical means it's real simple and easy to understand. It's like, so, ergo, you believe everything should be real fucking simple. It's like, not everything in life is really fucking simple. So does that make it good? Practical. To be quite blunt, the schools of government and so many other colleges and universities are not not practical. They rarely make any positive difference at all, and in reality, it's often just the opposite. In fact... It's likely that the professors in many schools of government across America don't even vote. And that's the simplest and most practical uh, of all aspects. What's your evidence for that statement? Yeah, p please, citation or... Okay. ...of government. The Karis School of Practical Government is designed to make a difference in the culture, not to perpetuate the status quo. It's designed to transform the culture, community by community. Yeah, because you now hate the state. status quo. You were fine with and it Luke when it was uh, in line with your beliefs. Now the status quo is real bad. Jesus lamented that the children of this world are wiser and more shrewd than the children of light. This shouldn't be. We have the wisdom of the scriptures and the inside of the spirit. So God's people of all folks should be shrewder and wiser than others. And this is particularly true in the political arena. After all, <coughs> Joseph was certainly head and shoulders above the other political folks in his day, as was Daniel in his day and Nehemiah in his day. And so okay, these were like the days of kings and shit. I mean, it wasn't, they didn't really have politics as we know it today whatsoever. <laughs> So many others in their day. But this is far too rare in America today, and in most other countries as well. Because we don't have a fucking monarchy. The Karis School of Practical Government will seek to change this. We recognize that the Bible addresses all aspects of the culture. And oh. In fact, a major Christian teaching today is about the seven mountains. Okay, but the, the, seven the ridiculous thing is there's, there's countries that do have uh, very little se or no separation of church and state. The United Kingdom has a fucking official church. I mean, these countries are have, have even more atheists, so it does, it's not even necessarily that that's going like, to make a difference. Like, it could be, have the exact opposite effect. 
I mean, America, I think religion is taken a lot more seriously than Western Europe and a lot of other places. I mean, like besides like third world countries, really. Areas in a nation that Christians must engage if that nation is to become what God wants it to be. Those seven areas are media, arts and entertainment, <laughs> education, the family. Was there a dog? Yeah. There, there is. Sorry. Dinor is having a fucking meltdown over here. Oh, okay. Dinor, come to your senses. And religion and business and government. <clears throat> now, perhaps it's in this latter area, the area of government, that of all the... So... The government. Like, here's the problem with your, your fucking plan so far. Like, this whole, like, we're going to infiltrate the, the government. Like, first of all, there's already... I mean, like, it's almost... Like mandatory, even still, that politicians had to be like, God, God bless America, I love God, blah, blah, blah. So, you guys are already pretty fucking tight in the government. Um, I don't, I don't see how you're gonna fucking get that going. Your idea of like, we need more Christians in media, well, there's already Christian media, most people ignore it because it's not taken seriously because it's clearly biased. And as for Christian arts and entertainment, like, that sucks, too. You guys have put out a bunch of movies. Like, you put out movies so bad that even, like, the best movie you put out is just watched by people, okay. ironically, who want to make fun of but it. But all this shit already exists. God's e not everything he's saying already he's exists. Really alive. And, you've, and you've made the point. Our government has tons of Christians in it. Christians make up the majority of people in our government. <laughs> they, or at least they say they're Christians. Right, because it's the majority of people voting are Christians. Well, really what this amounts to is it's not mainstream culture anymore. Now they have their little Christian side culture and like, gosh, guys, it was better when we were just the dominant culture and like everyone just listened to us and everyone had the same beliefs we did and everything was God and Jesus and blah, blah, blah. That's really what they're upset about. And anyone who disagrees, push them on down to the fringes of society. I, I want to know how he qualifies the Bible as a good document to promote, like, practical it's governance. It's a historical document, Paul. <laughs> it's historical. Yeah. Stuff Filled to the brim with genocide and rape and torture and people fucking stoning people. And, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's look to the Bible for <laughs> answers on how we can, you know, like, Be increase the value of modern day life. Let's bring back witch hunts and female subjugation. Let's let's go out and when we go to Iraq, don't just go there and bomb the children. Take the children for our concubines and bring them back here to the United States. Yeah. As the Bible done prescribed. As the Bible there commands. Is. This is the area most foreign to Christian thinking today. But it shouldn't be. After all, <laughs> when God founded his nation of Israel... He delivered to them a comprehensive God code of 613 it? laws yep. that covered every aspect of public policy, from criminal justice to education, from the military to immigration, from foreign policy to economics and taxes and everything in between. So the Bible hey, definitely gives it, us... Pause it. Okay, I'll tell you what. When God comes down and refounds America and we can see God and he proves he's God, then yeah, I'll go along with all that shit. I'll be like, God, you can set up the system because everything I've, I've, you've ever read in the Bible is true and all this is true and it's all been proven beyond any shadow of a doubt, then sure, I'll go along with it when that fucking day comes. Yeah, I mean, if God founded Israel, then he can make whatever rules he wants for yeah, them. Yeah, sure. But, you know... <laughs> When he founds, when he fucking comes down and refounds America, like this is now my country, God Sylvania or whatever, <laughs> you know, it, it, then he can make the rules. Much guidance in each of these areas, but too many Christians today think that God is silent in the areas of government and public policy, but he is not. Okay, most of the time, most of the time when anyone brings up these laws, as like something against the Bible, the first thing out of any Christian's mouth is like, that was the Old Testament. There's a new covenant between man and Jesus. Mosaic laws. What are you talking about? Oh, these laws, they're, they, were, they were changed. It's like, this is a sophistry. You know that, you can't just say that, that now half of your fucking text is just bullshit now. I mean, what about all the books that have been omitted from the Bible? I mean, <laughs> come on. It's all, it's all just bullshit. So I'm, but I'm just saying like these, these, these laws and systems of government that the Bible prescribes are so unpopular that even most Christians reject them as archaic and like behind Well, they the are times. fucking archaic. Why wouldn't they reject them? Times have fucking changed since fucking like the Bronze Age.
Like, even the most radical, hardcore Christian today is probably less religious. Yeah, don't eat than... shellfish, don't eat fucking pork, don't mix fabrics, don't work on the Sabbath. I mean, no one wants to do this shit anymore. No one fucking cares. That's why the Christians have abandoned it, because they don't fucking want to do it, because it's stupid. New covenant. New covenant, man. All right, moving on. Um, here's someone responding to Donald Trump. I believe this guy's... Rents Priebus? Yeah. 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 Rince Priebus. What a weird fucking name. It is name. a weird name. Rince Donald Priebus. Trump says you should be ashamed Rince of yourself, uh, for the Republican Rince Priebus. delegate selection process. He says it's it's rigged. What do you say? What do you say to that allegation? Well, I mean, it's, it's clearly not. Um, you know, look. Fuck all, all you. The, uh, it clearly fuck, is. Fuck actually. this guy. Really? It, it's not rigged. It's all fair. Really. Okay, I want to hear this explanation. The candidates have the rules of the game, and they've actually all been participating in the rules. So, um, um, wait, and, wait. The rules that you guys put into place. So you 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 make the rules. You decide everything. But the game is fair because you decided the rules, and they knew ahead of time the rules which you made, and hey, no one else has any control over. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Dude, these Hunger Games are totally fair, man. All the entrants knew the rules going in. In the case of Colorado, all of the candidates were participating. And let me just say, in Colorado, it wasn't just a weekend state convention. The convention system, which is used by some states, not a lot, uh, actually started a month ago in precincts where 60,000 people participated. Okay, you can say all the words you want to say, but at the end of the day, the person who got the most votes isn't getting the most delegates. So, eh. It just still seems like a giant subversion of democracy. Anticipated. Then it went to the county. Then it went to the... Then again, I'm sure Trump wouldn't be complaining if he was the one who stole a victory from Ted Cruz. No. Congressional districts, Wolf. And then it went to a <coughs> state convention, and the candidates all participated at every single step of the way. So there were no complaints uh, about that system, at least in Colorado. The second thing I'd say, Wolf, is that... The, the RNC doesn't, doesn't uh, sub subscribe for the states what states individually want to do with how they allocate their delegates. These are decisions that each of the states make. Under our rules, those decisions have to be submitted by October 1st of 2015, which they were. Um, and by the way... So there was no problem with what happened in Colorado, but even if there is a problem, that's Colorado's fault. That ain't our fault. Them fuckers in Colorado, they sitting there, they, they, they got that Rocky Mountain High going on, and you know, they didn't, they didn't pay, they made some rules, didn't make no fucking sense. You know how they are. Oh, they're blameless. Of Bunch of damn blameless. stoner Republicans up there in Colorado. Fuck you. The consequence of not submitting a plan the by October 1st yeah. of 2015 is that you would have to then use the same delegate plan that was used in 2012. But so Ryan, this was let, all let published just interrupt, it's all been but, out there. But I understand all these rules. They're very complex in all the states, uh, Republican parties and all the states. They have different rules. But he specifically said, you, and you're the chairman of the Republican National Committee, you should be ashamed of yourself for what's going on. How extraordinary is that? Nice, nice fucking follow-up, Wolf. Like, let him, yeah. let him completely... Let him completely dodge any responsibility for the obvious subversion of democracy that's going on under the RNC and ask him the salacious question. How does it make you feel when Donald Trump says that you ought to be ashamed? Isn't that absurd? Dude, this is a CNN's third-rate fucking journalism. Uh, this is just like, are you mad about what Trump said? Do you want to throw down with him? <clears throat> like, they give him a fucking baseball bat the size of a fucking tennis racket and then, like, Stand three feet away and just like hurl a, like a fucking giant softball, real soft yeah. at him. Like, yeah, boop, you get you hit it out of the park again, rinse. You've got like, the chairman of the fucking RNC sitting in front of you, and you have the opportunity to ask him why he thinks it's okay that the person that got the most popular vote didn't get the the most delegates. And you ask him how he feels about something mean that Trump said about him. What a fucking waste. <laughs> this media, man. I, you know, I have no idea historically how extraordinary that is. Um, you know, given the year we have it, it you know, it's, I, 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 I... The real story here is Trump's a dick. <laughs> Honestly, don't take it all that personally. 
Uh, but I do have to respond, though. Because, you know, the front runner of my party is beneath me, frankly. <laughs> oh, when a campaign says that the RNC is, you know, rigging the rules, it's just not the case. The rules have been set. They're in place. They're not going to change. Yeah, it's no one's saying you were rigging, you like rigged them like especially or something. What's being said is that you rigged them in advance to give establishment candidates the edge, the same way the Democratic Party has done the fucking exact same thing. Uh, in these states, and they're the same, you know, for the next state in New York, they're all out there. Everyone knows what the rules are. So I have to respond, though, if the party of which I'm the chairman of is getting attacked, especially when it's not true. Yeah, did a good job there, Priebus. Yep. Rance yep. Priebus. All right. I don't know how you stood up to that grilling by Wolf Blitzer. Moving on. Somehow you survived the storm. The wolf attack. I'm going to leave before that fucking manatee shows up. Hurry the fuck up, TJ. Oh, there's no manatee today. We're fine. Yeah, see, there's no manatee. Yeah. TJ was worried about yeah. nothing. Just Where hold it for TJ. Wait till TJ's back. Yeah, let's wait till TJ's back. And then back. release the manatee. <laughs> oh, the humanity. So apparently, Brett, not, since TJ's gone and we're here at the beginning of the crazy people segment and talking about the manatee, apparently sure. he quit YouTube and then came back <laughs> within 24 hours. So, Sean, that that's, just the, happened. that's the word on the street. Yeah. 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 Well, he's. So, he's he, that is a keenism. That is something that he is known to do. <laughs> Paul, I wanted to uh, I wanted to bring up a video that you made a while back where you covered um, a video that Jacqueline Glenn and two of her friends made. Uh, they were sure. outraged about the uh, transgender prank video. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this this next video is a video made by those friends of Jacqueline Glenn. And Jacqueline uh, appears featuring in it. Jacqueline Glenn. Yes. It's it's riveting. Riveting content. So change your mind, Paul. Okay. As a woman on YouTube, I would describe my experience as careful, empowering, brave. It's brave to be There's on YouTube. It takes a lot of courage to post a video on the I'm internet. Proud to be on YouTube, where at least I know I'm free. A lot of judgment when it comes to women and the kind of content they create. People tend to sexualize you. I just want to be out there and really empower girls with sexuality. But for some, they want to sexualize yes. you. I want to empower them with sexuality. It's what? Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Like okay. How was that edited together? Yeah, like <laughs> they sexualize you. I don't want to empower people with sexuality. It's they like, both had uh, sex in there. Let's put them together, even though they kind of make things seem confused and weird. Let's put those two clips right next to each other. I mean, what's really empowering about a YouTube video? I mean, I I, I don't see it. I don't see how you're gonna empower someone. I saw this video, and so now I'm empowered. If it's like a big viral hit, and you feel like, man, I'm the smartest motherfucker ever said anything in history. Then it's important. Well, we know it's not their content. Paul, Paul, your your what? take on it so far? I mean, uh, you know, I think what they're trying to do is have these kind of differing viewpoints of of what it's like to be a woman. But it comes out. I know that there's a narrative behind it. I just don't know what it is yet. I'm okay, sure well, it'll come you'll, to you'll see. It, you'll play. see. It'll congeal in a moment. The reason when I empower young generation with sexuality, I'm seen as a slut. Instead of focusing on things that you're saying and the points you're trying to make, they'll focus on, you know, what you look like that day or how much they would like. Uh, to yeah, do. man. <laughs> no one, no one would ever do that to me. Remember that one time, like every fucking video I've made since I've shaved my beard, where the comments are like, "Oh my god." Well, I mean, uh, get your beard back, please. Fat lesbian TJ. TJ, I don't know who this fat lesbian is on your channel, yeah. but she does make some good points. But goddamn, TJ, we miss you. Come back. I mean, I understand that it it wasn't like a nudie shoot or anything, but Jacqueline posed for Playboy's website. I mean, doesn't wasn't she kind of sexualizing herself when she did that? Yep. 
Well, I mean, you're talking about a plagiarist who is an internet tryhard who wants so desperately to have some measure of fame, and yet she's going to sit there and say, I, I can't believe people have opinions about me on the internet. It's like, well, that's everyone who's a public fucking figure on the internet. Don't you have like 400,000 subscribers? I mean, so is, are you saying every comment about you is like this? It's like, of course you're going to get this shit. It's a bunch of anonymous people who have an opinion about you. Oh, no, I'm so surprised when you're the one that fucking invites this sort of criticism because you're fucking putting something into the fucking public sphere. Stop trying to control someone's reaction to your shit you dumb motherfucker yeah, she too. acts like she acts like 90 percent of all youtube comments aren't like hateful derisive trash no matter what your gender <laughs> is like like the the most upvoted shit on all of my videos with the exception of maybe one or two is all shit just critical and awful about me it's just <coughs> it's just youtube like you're not suffering because you're a female in fact you benefit from from the attention that Greatly you get benefits outspoken, outspoken female on YouTube I would I would venture to say and I'm not trying to be a dick here that Jacqueline Glenn's audience is probably an order of magnitude larger than it would be if she was Jack Glenn so I don't know what she's complaining about and it affects me because I'm a woman and I'm gonna be mother one day I could be giving a, a heartfelt personal story about some hardship that I've gone through, yet, you know, a large number of comments will be, show me your tits. Tell me wow. So fucking what? That's the internet. That's what people do. What do you want? Do you want, if you want to say space, then just moderate your comments and say, I don't want any comments I don't like. Yeah, I mean, like, PewDiePie had to turn off his comments because it was just so bad. Yeah, that's his, that, that's his channel, fine. He's a fucking guy. He's not like some chick. People just find other stupid shit to say. Like, I can't even tell you how many times I've gone through my comments section and, like, 90% of the comments don't even have shit to do with anything the video said or did or mentioned. It's just, like, a bunch of crap or some, like, guy trying to fucking say something pithy to get some thumbs up. <laughs> Everyone reward yeah. my clever comment with thumbs up immediately! As soon as, as, soon as you get I'm gonna take him to the internet bank and buy an internet penis with him. <laughs> As soon as you get a modicum of popularity on YouTube or anywhere on the internet, it's like a moth to the flame. Like these retarded dregs of society come <laughs> shambling out of the shadows and they're like, faggot, dick butt, show me your dick. <laughs> you know, like, it's just like these zombie empty headed morons and everybody's subjected to it. Everybody, no matter what your gender is, no matter what you look like, everybody gets a slice of the pie. Oh yeah. I have this ability of blocking off everything that is bad. <laughs> You're just a slut. Yeah, you don't deserve there you to go. Live. Shut up and go do your makeup. Show us what lipstick you use or something, you know, you women do that are useful. I wouldn't even rape you. I had a conversation I with... Wouldn't even rape. <laughs> I wouldn't even rape you. You are beneath rape. <laughs> this has YouTube with 4 million plus subscribers. Who said that... Uh, listen, Olga, if you're not getting lots of opportunities, your channel will disappear in the next two years unless you'll go back to basics and spread your legs. People have described in detail in an email that took 15 minutes to read oh, how free oh. I, I made a video and somebody was like, Paul's ego, how did TJ's fist feel up your asshole? <laughs> oh. was, your butthole wide open, man. I can't make videos no more, man. I get tweets every day about how I look bad without a beard, man. I can't. I have to wear this beard like a badge <laughs> of shame, like a burka on my ugly face. <laughs> Should wrap me up in duct tape until I suffocate to death, and then those people could come and watch. I can put a lot of thought into something, and I can put my heart into something, and sometimes I, I'll say it, and I'll make a video that. Okay, you know what? So what if you put that so, into so, it? So so fuck. No one cares. All right. There's people who fucking like. Every time you've ever seen like a shitty, horrible movie or something, there's probably, it probably does represent a lot of people working really hard and like catering people and light guys and all these people working really yeah, hard. sleeping in fucking shit conditions. There's people in almost every fucking Putting field. their hearts and souls yeah. into it and then the fucking end result is, I don't know, fucking Fantastic Four.
<laughs> any version of it. The original. Any the of them, honestly. Course. They're all shit. Yeah, yeah, but the ones that were made in the early 2000s are definitely better than the Still, one we just I think watched. the one that came out recently was even more hated, though. People said it's, like, bad, but, like... Oh, I've never seen it. It's, like, painful and it's bad. I'm not going to waste my time, because no. it actually was a decent comic book, so to, like, make such terrible movies out of it is just sad. Why does it just not work on the big screen? Anyway, know. the point is that... Done right. People worked hard on that, and you know what? They still get shit on because no one gives a fuck how hard someone was working it, on. Not, they only care not if the product is any good to them. It's not an excuse for criticism either. Yeah, I mean, someone just says your tits are, uh, you show us your tits. Yeah, it's just a troll. You already know it's a troll. And I mean, like, even if you have a fan base, like, you could be like ICP. You know, if you're a fucking juggalo, ICP, man, they the fucking bomb, they the greatest. And you know, if you're anybody else, it's like ICP. I've either never heard of them or they fucking suck. So. It I mean, everyone's like got forget. this. You're always going to polarize. You're always going to have as much negative reaction as positive in, on some quarter of the internet. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it, I think we're forgetting, though, because all of us here know from experience that once you achieve a certain level of notoriety online, you get all this shit no matter what. So, like, the people that are watching that have, like, two subscribers and one of them is their aunt from Michigan, you know, and they always get nothing but positivity on their videos. Yeah, this might sound like a pretty fucking compelling argument. But trust me, take it from somebody who's on a fucking popular internet show. Any of these fucking guys will fucking attest to this. You get a lot of hateful shit said about you, no matter all, what. All you have to do is go to any fucking vlogger or, or anything and go fucking read the comments of their videos and see, like... You know, just keep scrolling down, you know? I mean, just look through the whole fucking thread and see the kind of shit that... And just imagine, like... I remember one time I was I was uh, doing, like, a live stream, and um, I started just, like, out, out of boredom and trying to fill content. I just started reading my YouTube comments from a video. And after, like, three minutes of it, they're like, Please stop! Please! It's like, yeah, how do you think I feel, you fucks? <laughs> well, not to mention, this video is just filled with emotional appeals. It's like, it's, it's like, oh, you know, feel bad for me. Oh, we're such victims. And, oh, I'm just trying to put out this great video. And people are focusing on this negative stuff and not even commenting just because I'm a woman. That's all I boil I mean, down to is a woman. That's it. That's it. Ben, ben, ben hosts the show here, and I was looking for some fan art for a thumbnail for tonight's show. And, like, I saw three different, like, fan arts of Ben getting violently raped. Like, just, like, one of them, TJ was raping him, and then one of them, he was, like, getting raped by a bunch of tentacle penises. Yeah, I've you seen know what that I mean? one. Like, everybody fucking gets it. Everybody gets <laughs> it, dude. Like, it's, like, they're acting like exclusively women are getting shit on on the internet. But us guys in this guy club, man, we got it good. It's sunshine and roses. Yeah, chat, live in like, an ivory tower. It's probably I'll, I'll great upon the hill. Post it because I feel like people are going to look at it and, you know, they won't take it seriously. Just because well, you that's your decision. that some people might You're not positing appreciate your thoughts onto others. what you brewing up in your head. Just go for it and push it out there. Why do you think it takes 200 channels to find the top 20 female channels? That's really embarrassing. Arbitrary As a woman, I am number. Arbitrary standard. It's bad. Offered far less money than my male counterparts that have similar views and subscribers. How do you know that? I, that is bullshit. YouTube has no, no... There is no metric built into YouTube that discriminates on the basis of gender. Um, YouTube has an algorithm set. One is like watch time depends on how much you make. And two, if you want to go talk about like branding and advertisers, advertisers want people like this. They want women in this in this demographic that these women meet. Like if you go look at like the promotions, like the, so different sites, the vast majority, like eighty percent, I would say from what I've seen, are geared towards women. So what they're what she's saying is totally fucking false. Actually had to come to the point where I make a fake email that's a man. Mine is Ryan, <laughs> and he will respond to emails from brands that's for me. And that's he will bogus. Me. He, I mean, maybe society, you did it, but that's woman, bogus. I would like to say, listen, we pop babies out of our vaginas. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Here's your fucking trophy for, for, for happen, happening to be born the gender that fucking shits a baby out of its vagina. Congrats. Let me let me fucking lay my coat in the puddle of YouTube for you so you can pause without getting any negative contents.
We can do anything. Before you say something negative or before you spread more. Is that kind of like staying at a Holiday Inn Express? <coughs> if, no matter what it, no matter what it is, you, you're just an expert because you can squeeze a baby through your cum. Um, yeah, how, how about people just fucking accept that people on the internet are gonna say a lot of shit. It's like, shit, this bomb's gonna go off in ten seconds. Ten, do you know how to defuse it? No, but I'm a woman. I've, I squeeze a baby out of my vagina. I know what I'm doing. Give me them fucking wire cutters. Snip. Boom. Dead. <laughs> hatred because of whatever insecurity you have about yourself just think about the you don't, impact that, that's that not why they're doing that necessarily something positive something people positive that, have, that people that have why does it have to be positive what does positive even fucking mean what you're basically asking is for people just to fucking reinforce your version of reality reinforce your narrative agree with you on every fucking point yes. that's not you gonna want, happen you want a nothing but positivity if you have deep-seated insecurities you should not seek the light of the public eye Period. Because nobody, no matter who you are, no matter what your gender is, no matter if you have a dick and balls or if you heroically deliver babies from your cunt, you're going to get shit on the internet. People are going to say mean things. I'm to bet you wish somebody could have told you. Yeah, I want an army of sycophants to reinforce whatever crazy beliefs I have. Yeah, l l let's just bring yeah. that about. Yeah, I mean, come another, on. Another, another prime example of feminism uh, being like like women being simultaneously just constant victims, just withering, shrinking violets that can't take YouTube criticism, and also being empowered, indomitable, immovable <laughs> objects. I am woman. <laughs> Hear me whimper about a mean YouTube comment. <laughs> Yeah, this show is so strength. problematic. Why this show is fucking of, sexist. Why don't you draw on some of that some of that strength that it takes to give birth to babies and suck it up when you get mean YouTube comments like everybody else does? Oh shit. That's just some stupid music yeah. shit. All right. So, uh <laughs> Joseph Martelli, he changed the name of his channel to like the amazing what what was it? I don't remember. Ass face or something like, like that. The ass face drunken peasants amazing atheist something <laughs> extravaganza blah blah blah. Ad infinitum. Um, let's listen to some some more of his madness. Joseph Martelli here. Hi Joseph. The internet is not going to see my face. Good. For a while. And if Thank it does, you. it's going to see it the way I want to show it. All right. So, how were they seeing it before? Yeah, I got goals, and I got—I don't know. Maybe, maybe people were like editing his shit. Yeah, like uh, uh, photoshopping him okay. and shit. Probably. Neat. I don't know. Got things in my life that the internet don't need to know nothing about no more. Okay. Since the internet Thank is full you. of lies, appreciate and hypocrites, it. That's how I gotta treat them as. Yeah, gotta yeah, treat the them the way they need to be Here's a, with liars and hypocrites, like people who file <laughs> false DMCA's against people because they're butthurt about a video. You know, liars and hypocrites <laughs> like that, Joseph. Yeah, they suck. I hate them. Treated. So check it. I'm gonna say some words and I'm gonna title some of my videos that none of you motherfuckers <laughs> are gonna know anything about. I'm gonna make accounts that gonna none flow, of you motherfuckers gonna are gonna words. know anything about. Gonna speak okay, some truths. Wait a minute. So, your brilliant plan for avoiding um, harassment is I'm gonna make my account so obscure, people ain't even gonna know where the fuck to find me. It's like, uh, I think so I see the flaw in this plan. He's so pathetic. Why does he even give that much of a fuck about some random people on the internet? Like, what is it with people? It's like, there's lots of random people on the internet. Yeah, sure, sometimes it pisses you off. I mean, um, uh, and undoubtedly, but just move on with your fucking life. Who cares? People keep burglarizing my house, so I've scattered all my belongings across the earth. That way, no one knows where they are. <laughs> brilliant! Brilliant! It's like, oh my god. You're a fucking idiot. I don't know whether you're crazier than stupid or stupider than crazy. I, I, I love this too. Like he's got to explain to us that he's going underground. Like if Joseph Martelli keeled over and croaked tomorrow, <laughs> anybody would know. Like, whatever happened to Joseph Martelli, man? That guy had some good points. No, no. Dude, you, let me tell you notice. something. Let me tell you something. If I, if if like. 
two months. Like, like, let's say we don't hear anything about him for like two months, right? Oh, dude, dude, I just remembered something. What but is it? finish your thought, and then I'll tell you. Okay, if there was like two, like if I didn't hear anything about Joseph Martelli for like two months, and someone came to me and was like, "Dude, did you hear Joseph Martelli died?" I'd be like. Who? <laughs> you, know, you know what? There, there are rumors and a video, um, going around that Gorilla One Nine Nine is dead. Oh wow! Oh, really? Man. Yeah. There's a rest in peace Gorilla One Nine Nine video on his yeah. channel. Some okay. Well, I'm gonna take that with a grain of salt, though. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna take it with a grain of salt. I'm gonna accept it as fact because I'm launching a new contest. I want to see Gorilla One Nine Nine tribute videos, <laughs> <laughs> tributes to his life and what he accomplished. Talking about uh, flying saucers at the crucifixion on top of a pyramid. Yeah. Oh, you're trying to take attention away from the other contest. TJ and Brett in love. Send him to Paul's ego. My, the hundred bucks, hundred one dollars for the winner of my contest. Hundred two dollars now. Hundred three dollars. Hundred five dollars now. I said one hundred five. TJ. Yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> he all, he so the easy number. to trick TJ. So easy. One hundred six, Scotty. <laughs> one dollar more than TJ's. One dollar more than Scotty's. One dollar more than TJ's. It stands. One dollar more than Scotty's. This number just keeps yeah, going infinitely up. Who knows what the number? We now be. owe you guys infinity yeah. money. <laughs> All right, seriously, the prize the prize for if the prize for mine's a hundred. I don't I don't give a fuck. Same what Scotty thing. makes his one hundred and one. One hundred and one. <laughs> so, are funny. you listening to this shit, Paul? I mean, yes. seriously. Yes, the 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 sibling rivalry is real, man. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Um. Okay. What, what? What? Oh yeah, Joseph Martelli. That's right. And guess what? So. And guess what? So, so? So? What? So, so what? So what? You boring little fuck. So? Fuck yous. Fuck yo. You got a fucking problem with me? Drop that mic. You got a fucking problem with Joseph Martelli? Yeah. Okay, then. You know the Bible says not to curse, right? I love it when people make these internet videos and it just falls flat. Like, they're trying to be tough. They're trying to be street and shit. They're like, oh, you fucking pussies making comments. You want to come visit me in the Bronx? You want to come? I fuck out. You got a problem with me? You got a problem with Joseph Martelli? I don't give a fuck. Like, it, all, it never works. Like, I've never seen one of those videos and I'm like, yeah, I'm a genius. What a tough guy. <laughs> yeah, you're never like, oh, shit, don't fuck with this, dude. It's like... Even if you did come across as intimidating, there's still, like, a lot of internet between me and you. So, who cares? Yeah, tough guys actually show up at people's houses and beat the shit out of them. That's why they don't talk about it. Like that fucking, uh, there was that MMA guy a while back that had some dude on Twitter that was just trolling him constantly. And the MMA guy found out somehow the dude's fucking address and just showed up at his fucking house. He was like, hey, man, you've been talking a lot of shit on fucking Twitter. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Nothing happened. No fight happened. Clearly. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm real sorry. I was just kidding around. Like, okay. That's what actual tough people, they don't go, I'm Joseph fucking Martelli. You got a problem? I don't care. <laughs> Him saying his name over and over again is tough enough, Paul. Joseph Martelli, bitch. Yeah, he'll fuck you. <laughs> Fuck, fuck you, fucking dick. Like, fuck all you haters. It. I'm it's Joseph Martelli. I'm real scared, man. I'm real fucking scared right now. What if I go to New York City and run into Joseph, TJ? His name is so recognizable that every time we play one of his videos, one of us has to remember that he's the guy that proposed the lesbian island before <laughs> we even know what we're listening to. Like, that's happened like six times in, in Joseph Martelli segments. Everybody's like, huh? Things like Joseph Martelli, and then he'll be like, "Oh yeah, the guy that did the lesbian." Oh, that that moron. Yeah, Joseph Martelli, a name that rings with, like, like recognizability. All right, Joseph Martelli, Joseph Martelli, Joseph Martelli, Joseph Martelli, Martelli, Joseph Martelli. All right, so I this still won't remember it. Do you want to see that? Uh, do you remember this one? Do you want to cover this one? Uh, I think we should do that at the top of a show. Okay, then we'll do that later. Let's do. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> My dick will 
get play soft. it or if play it. I do what she recommends is the Just name play of this it. video. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Dan. I really like you. I really like you. Like, I really, really like you. Well, I had to leave them because I like you more. I had to leave them. What's your name? Cree. Cree? 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 Oh, God. This Cree? Yeah, isn't he isn't he creepy yeah, as what fuck? What the fuck it's, is going on? Th you know what? <sighs> this dude just runs up on random girls and is just like, "I like you. I love you. I love you. I like you." Uh, Carla? <laughs> Sounds like TJ. No. Where are you from? <laughs> I love you. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I like you. I really like What oh what, where God, are you dude. from here? Do you have oh a boyfriend? god. This Tase this guy, please. Yeah, mace him or something. Yeah, for fuck's fuck. Sake. See, this what is the fucker that needs party. to be on an island, not not the gay people. Yes. It's f yeah. You do. Are you in love with him? <laughs> I like you a lot. Oh. Like, oh. This, like it's oh, good so far. God. Like, God, you're so creepy, dude. Just enough. leave her a fuck alone. <laughs> like, I mean, so far. I mean, but I'm gonna get to know. I want to get to know you. I'm going <laughs> to get to know you. <laughs> like, uh. I don't want to just keep talking to you. You know. Do you like me so far? So out of air idiots like this that give ammunition to the fucking like uh, SJWs yeah. that are saying constantly being harassed. Just stop this fucking shit, please. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're serious it, about picking up a girl, why the fuck would you just run up on her with a video camera? I uh, mean, like. <laughs> You have to be a retard. Joke's on you, Ben. Ten minutes later, she was sucking his cunt. Yeah, sure. Ah, why not? Just because I have a camera? Look at him. Because I have a camera, right? Or because my hair is like kind of like long, kind of like... What? That's correct. No, no. Yeah, um... Walked out of nowhere and started telling her you loved her and asking her personal questions about her life. Here's here's another one. Hi. Girl, hi. Hi, girl. I like you. I like you. Happy New Year. What's your name? Amanda. Amanda? I'm Daniel. <laughs> no, thank you. Do you like me? I, <laughs> what I like you, obviously. Uh, uh, Wait. Uh, oh, you wow. The cringe The cringe is so fucking strong. Hello? Bye. Happy New Year. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Perfect lighting. Dude, come on. It's so you. obvious. <laughs> I can't. I can't do this. This is, this is harassment. Yeah, yeah. Dude, this is seriously fucking. He, this dude is fucked, dude. He puts his name in his videos and everything. I mean, he's like. He's a piece of shit. Someone needs to go stop him. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, um, I think it's like. Hold on. It's at the beginning of this like last Dan video. Dan something. Dan Silly. Hi. Dan Silly. Silly. I can like you. Hi. Oh shit. Hi. Another one. Hi. Like Hi. 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 Live the best Hi. life possible. Yeah, no. What, do, what does that even mean? I don't know. Let's see what he says on his website. All right. I'm gonna go. Wow. I am a master of meeting women. Dan. Yeah, women I mean, that promptly run the fuck away from you. This is how I picture Roosh V picking up women. <laughs> I honestly think Roosh V is has more tact in game than this. He says he like waits around the corner. Okay. So, so like, here's what happens if you go to his website. Dan Seely or Siley or whatever the fuck it is dot com live the best life possible sign up for the Dan Seely dot com newsletter what? sign up to receive magical updates daily learn how to become healthy and happy I will show you what I am doing each day in order to live a magical life email address first name so, so you're supposed to give him his, your email address and your first name so he can send you his bullshit newsletter. So so his website has nothing to do with creeping on anybody. Um, it's probably his but newsletter. That's, who knows what his newsletter has yeah. in it. Let's see if anyone actually Dan, has them. Dan Seeley's uh, polyamory family. Polyamory. So he's a guy that's into like multiple partners living with yeah. multiple partners and he's just like playing like the statistics like he just runs around talking to like every girl he's attracted to in hopes that one of them <laughs> would... <laughs> wow i think he might have a reddit they dude he's like literally running around the street no i guess not. with a camera I don't understand. so i don't know i don't know the mystery just deepens what a strange fellow. Yeah. Someone sent that to me earlier, and I was like, whoa. I, I was getting uncomfortable watching it.
Yeah, I can't hang with shit like that. That that type of shit pops up on the internet every once in a while, just like a dude with no social awareness, like trying to pick up chicks, and they're always videotaping it as if that just makes the pussy the, the pussy moister. Like, I, a man, nothing nothing gets me dripping wet like a man that runs up on me in a park with a video <laughs> camera. Right. I love you. What? Uh, I like you. Do you like me? Why don't you let me? I, I guess I have long hair, you know? Uh, yeah, hair. Yeah. yeah. So, let's talk. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah. All right. I like you. I like you. All right. Uh, TJ, have you I seen... I like you, Ben. TJ, have You're you... You're coming out, Ben. I like you a lot. Shut the fuck up. I like you, Ben. You like me? <laughs> I like you. Have you seen the gun, <laughs> have you seen the gun bed? The gun bed. Yeah. I have not seen this. All right, here it is. Here's an ad for the gun bed. The gun bed. The gun bed. Yep. Bed okay. frames designed for your peace of mind. Don't be Imagine scared. Be prepared. In and hear the okay. sound of glass breaking. Shit. Followed by large footsteps and voices boom, in your boom, house. Boom. You hear this guy's voice. When seconds count. And Nine the police are just count. minutes away. You need to have already thought. Thinking now may be too late. A gun in a nightstand, a closet, or under a bed may not be accessible quickly enough. What if when you woke up, the intruders were already in your room? Yeah. At that point, reaching for a firearm may tip off the intruder where your gun is and get you killed. There is a solution. The patent pending gun bed. The oh gun bed God. is quite oh, possibly what? the Come biggest break. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Hold on. What? Um, like, I don't know about anyone else, but I, like, put pressure on that part of the bed all the time <laughs> on accident, you know, or just because, happenstance, I don't want a fucking shotgun falling out. Like, what if you, the fucking shotgun falls out and, you know, you, you fucking end up pulling the trigger in your sleep and blowing your wife's brains out or something? Right, shit. it points at the, the other side of the bed. As it's falling out. I mean, at the very best, it's gonna fucking knock you in the fucking head. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I want a fucking barrel butt of a gun smashing into my face yeah. as later, I'm sleeping. Later on, they'll show part. Uh, they'll show a part where there's two people in bed, and he literally has the barrel of his loaded gun pointed at the woman next to him. Next to him, like for at least two or three seconds. Yeah, when he's fumbling for a gun. That just came out of his fucking bed after just being yeah. woken from sleep. What if he fucking uh, accidentally pulls the trigger when he's fucking grabbing the damn thing? Yeah, how paranoid do you need to be to have something like this? And it's like, okay, so you're going to wake up, you're going to hear glass breaking, you're going to grab a gun, the first thing you're going to do is, like, just shoot to kill. You, you, you don't know what's going on. These security measures might make sense in, like, Somalia or something. The gun bed allows fast something. access to a firearm while keeping it secure, off the floor, out of the closet or the nightstand, and away from curious children when locked. In the event you hear an intruder and think it would be wise to investigate, the shotgun can quietly be removed, although I use the loudest racking shotgun I could find because the last sound an intruder wants to hear is the sound of a shotgun racking a shell. That sound is a universal language that may cause an intruder to flee without any confrontation at all. Notice the muzzle goes past the second person's head and the natural movement brings it farther away from your loved one. For this reason, never store a pistol in the gun bed. Other features include a small cabinet lock for obvious safety and security reasons, adjustable springs that can be moved to change the pressure. Okay, the guy who is making and voicing this and probably invented this product as well is like... <laughs> he's probably like the the fucking like he probably like uh lives out in the fucking woods like the unabomber in some small shack where he's like working on his manifesto and shit and he uses all the profits from his gun bed to buy more stockpile more ammunition for the coming race war whatever the fuck yeah. is going to happen i don't know open. dude like it, it's part it's all part of the absurd uh power fantasy that some gun people engage in where they're like liberty warriors and who knows a team of ninjas might break into my fucking house at any moment i need to have some some weird like fucking drawer over my head when i sleep so i can get my hands on a shotgun quicker than i could leaning over the side of the bed 
It's absurd. Like no, nobody that buys this bed is ever going to use it to defend themselves. In fact, I have a feeling more people are going to get clocked in the head with their own fucking uh, shotgun by accidentally bumping their head up against that back panel at night than will ever shoot an intruder with this absurd fucking invention. The door, although the door comes set with enough pressure not to open if you bump it while sleeping or moving around in bed. For more information and pricing, go to www gunbed.net thank you yeah i wonder how much it is got a a patenting mechanism that somehow gives easily when you push the back of your hands over your head awkwardly but won't push easily if your pillow mushes up against the back of your bed while you're rolling over at night yeah okay all right bud good invention next video is 15 questions every christian woman should ask christian men oh Blam, 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 we are back. Are y'all ready for this one? Sisters, are you ready? This one exclusively is for you. Brothers, you can watch. But brothers, if you watch, you're going to be hot. You're going to, because some of this stuff in this job right here, boy, is going to rattle, boy. It's going to shake your cages, man. I'm telling it's, it's, it's. Just so you guys know, the gun bed is uh, $1,600. What? Jesus the gun bed is sixteen hundred dollars. But don't worry, Mat- there's enough. There's, there's an economy model that's gun bed, gun anywhere for three ninety nine. Oh, only three ninety nine. Some heavy stuff in this one today. So this is for the ladies. I know I've been coming at you kind of hard, and you've been writing in it and responding with sincere hearts about, dude, what can we do? How can we raise our standard up? What kind of questions can we ask men before we get into a relationship with them? How can we guard ourselves? How can we guard our hearts? So I got it. I got a list for you today of 15 questions that godly women. Who the fuck would turn to this guy as an expert on any subject matter? <laughs> No clue. Probably not very many people. Who is deferring to this dude's today? wisdom? Why do you say that, TJ? Because he's black? Because he has an accent? Because he wears his hat on backwards? See, this is this is how the white man really feels when he yep. sees a black man. Yeah, I guess so. I need to ask men while you're still in the friendship stages before you get all moody <clears throat> eyed and he, he, he calls and you're like, oh, you know, every time the phone rings, you're hoping it's him. And before the feelings start twisting. He really, like, Knew what that was like, you know? Yeah. It's like, you get, you get that call, and you knew it was him, you get all excited. And then it kind of cut there, you know? Like, maybe he realized it, it was going too far. Uh-huh. Who knows what he said. You just you know, like, to... He's probably not I'm like... To... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead, dude. Now you do it. <laughs> I, I, I'm just starting to think that, like, like people are are, like, leaving Christianity in record numbers. Because no matter what the situation, there's like a list of rules you got to follow. Like maybe people don't like every little social interaction they have boiled down to like, here's 15 things you got to do if you're a Christian before you can date somebody. Like maybe people are tired of that shit. Maybe. Let's see what he says. Hey, your heart get all fluttery and stuff like that. Once yeah, your yeah. heart get fluttery, heart you start fluttery. Loving, dude, there's a good chance you're not going to care what the Bible says. You're not going to want accountability. Oh, no. You're not going to want instruction from godly people. You're not going to want to hear this dude isn't right for you or this relationship is ungodly. Once you fall in love, you pretty much close your ears to everything. Except for what you want. That's your boo. That's your man. Why everybody hating? Why you mad because you ain't got no man? And, and, and just because he ain't perfect. Girl, he, he ever, tried. I've ever, heard it all. Ever, so I want to get to the system. Like, say these 15 things or is he just going to do the hard shake Dude, the entire it's, show. it's it's the fucking bad youtube video rule they can never get to the point quickly it never happens i'm, I'm fucking serious it's like you just know because it takes them five minutes to get to the fucking point don't worry it's before coming it's coming love, before you get emotionally attached get you some questions you can ask these guys to make sure you're headed in the right direction this is if you really don't want a godly man don't watch this video don't watch it Cause this is for the sisters that want the guy. You already said all, all of this. It. That's the fucking title of the video. You already said every fucking thing you need to say. Get to the fucking list. I think that if someone clicks on a video like 15 things you gotta do if you want a godly man or whatever, that's probably someone who's interested in that subject for some fucking reason. You don't need yeah, to tell you know us what? that it's not for people who don't want that. It's fucking evident. When I click on a countdown list to watch it, you want to know what the first words I hope I hear out of the fucking person's mouth is? 
Number 15. That's it. I want I want to go right into the list. I don't need the pre-qualifier. If I've clicked on your top 10 list, it's something I'm already interested in. Very true. Interrupt the man that fears God and loves God to want that godly family, want that godly marriage. You got to start uh, somewhere. Uh, so this is the beginning. I call this phase one. Just phase one. This phase one. Marriage. This ain't falling in love. This is just phase <laughs> one. All right. All right. I'm done with this motherfucker. <laughs> this ain't even. This is, oh, wow. Five fucking minutes worth of this shit to get to your fucking list, bro. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving on. I'm never playing this guy again. What a frustrating fuck. Yeah. All right. You want that kindly man? Probably. What is this? The Lodgy Noir. No. Those out there with a melanin deficiency, it is not the job of black women to explain to you all in nauseum the ramifications of racism and white. In nauseum? It's ad in nauseum. nauseum. Yeah. In oh, nauseum. mansplaining. Nause On nauseum. <laughs> Okay, you, you're ju you're you're using your Anglo-centric English. Well, she's All she's right. using I Latin can. phrases, and I, I don't I don't I don't care for her uh, fucking appropriating Latin. If so, ever I run across something like this, and she and, and they start out the video with like, "It is not my job to educate you about my personal philosophy that I want you to defer to at every moment." I'm I'm instantly done. Like it's over. <laughs> Like, why do people do this? Why do why do you think this is going to in like engender like positive feelings for your cause and people? Because I know what I love. Like, I love walking up to somebody and having them going, "Hold up, it's not my job to explain to you how to interact with me. I'm gonna I'm gonna really seek out that person's company." <laughs> supremacy we are not obligated to educate you on our oppression that we have to experience daily that you okay, benefit wait, wait, from wait. on the so, daily so we're, so we don't we can't experience it because you're saying that basically as a white male it's impossible for me to know what the experience is but then you're also not obligated to tell me your experiences so how am i supposed to know and it's not your job to educate me but so how do i ever learn this because you say if i if i go read about this you say no it's not the same thing you're not experiencing it so you're the one with the experience. The only way I can learn is from you. That sounds like racism job, to me, Scotty. Scotty. It's, not, it's not her job. Okay, well, <laughs> Scotty is racist. It's not our job. You are not entitled to our time. You are not entitled to our labor. You are not entitled to our kindness. Bitch, you're not even entitled to a sliver of the sidewalk when we're walking outside. You're not entitled to... I'm not entitled to a sliver of the sidewalk when you're walking outside. I'm actually entitled to any part of the sidewalk. It's for the pub. It's for public use. You fucking cunt. What's up, my beautiful black babies? And welcome to another episode of Flash Noir. Now into today's episode, I just wanted to come and talk about how white people feel as if you know it's the job of black people, but black women in particular, to explain to them racism and sexism and massage noir and anything else they can think of so on their random you're, So day. you're not racist, but yet you're gonna define, oh, it's, all white people believe this. You're a well, fucking racism racist. Is, racism is power plus privilege. Oh, that Sorry. definition is bullshit. We all fucking know it. It's just a fucking cop out so they can say, oh, well, we're, they, they could be bigots, but they can't be racist because yeah. they lack power. It's like, oh, so it's, be it's better to be a bigot. Wonderful. If a white if a white woman uh, made a fucking channel where she was like, "What's up, beautiful white people? Let's talk about these darkies, man. These these ape-like creatures walking among us that ain't entitled to a sliver of the sidewalk," she'd be up in fucking arms, dude. It would of be course. a goddamn holocaust on the internet. But uh, because this chick is black, she can sit there and just generalize white people for an entire video. Awesome. Not racist That's because they asked. This is all sparked by a particular incident that happened on Tumblr. So anyway, I'm on Tumblr. Uh, I see I got a message. You know, you get all happy when you got a message. Like, Ooh, somebody want to talk to me? So yeah, I go in there and I see, oh, um, hello, sir slash ma'am. Um, is white privilege a thing? If so, elaborate. Elaborate? Bitch, who was you demanding information from first? Um... So you have a Tumblr ask box, and you get mad when people ask questions to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How, how illogical. I mean, 
you know, it, it's it's obviously optional. They they don't have any actual ability to command you to elaborate. I mean, obviously they're, just, they're asking you to fucking elaborate. Obviously, what she's saying is it's so self evident that white privilege exists. Why would you ask such an absurd question? She's incredulous, basically. Stuff. I don't think you're in the right place, sweetheart. If you don't know what white privilege is. This is kind of like racism one-on-one -on -one type shit, so if you don't even know what that is, like, you this is are very argument. far behind. If you're that's racism 101 shit, y'all. Yeah. White privilege, that's racism 101. So you're saying this, so you're saying this is a deep, terrible, systemic issue that people are constantly abused and killed and die for, but then you're, then you're just gonna say, oh, it's just racism 101, just cavalierly, so obviously you don't even take this shit that seriously. Yeah, I mean, like, if you really thought this was, like, a serious, huge, systemic problem, wouldn't you want to explain it to as many people as possible? Especially those interested in talking to you about it. I mean, like, if I... I don't know about you, but if I'm, like... <laughs> deeply interested in like the uh, an issue and how it affects society like i'm liable to go around and fucking talk about it especially if no. i have a youtube channel with an audience well if you educate someone if you if you tell someone about your your viewpoint it opens up uh the ability for them to ask clarifying questions and that's a scary proposition for an sjw because clarifying questions are harassment <laughs> look at the way she's look at the way she's reacting. It's not like he was like, "Hey, ape person. Hey, cunt of a female. Why does white privilege?" He was just like, "Hey, uh, hey, sir or madam, does white privilege exist? Please elaborate." What are you doing? How how dare you ask me a clarifying question? <laughs> the impudence. You're a black woman. That's fine. I will teach you all goddamn day. This is what I do. This is what I'm passionate okay. about. But so if you're you racist. are anyone. Outside of the realm of a black woman, if you're not in you're that racist. group specifically, girl, like go to Google. Google is always free. I think I say that in like every one of you're my racist. videos. Yeah, like okay, so 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 here's racism 101 for you. When you fucking start saying like, okay, black people, black women specifically are okay coming to me and asking anything, but anyone else, fuck off. That is a racist policy. I don't know why anyone in general would want to ask you anything because you're obviously a fucking moron, but if they do, you shouldn't discriminate them based on race. I mean, like, can you imagine if I was, like, on my channel and I saw, like, a comment from a black person, I'm like, block, we don't need your opinion around here, Darky. Hey, Darky, there's Google. If what she's saying is true and her channel is for uh, black women only and about black women only, why has she spent the entire video talking to white people and telling them that they're not worthy of the sidewalk and that she's not, she doesn't have to explain shit? Don't you think if it was your passion to talk to black women, you would talk to black women and not white people? It seems yeah. like maybe it's your passion to inflame racial tensions in people. Like, maybe it's your passion to get a, a, a group of like-minded, single-minded fucking racists together and chuckle about white people. That's starting to, maybe, maybe I'm wrong though. Maybe that's just my white privilege speaking. That is definitely your white yes, privilege. Yes, it is. You are a disgusting cis male. You're a fucking white male. You're a white male. You don't deserve a sliver of sidewalk. Google is free, bitch. She is open 24 hours. She is always busting out all the knowledge. And founded by disgusting okay, white like, people. Google is the hoe of information. I mean, if you really need to know something, you can go to Google. Bitch, you ain't even gotta stay strictly with Google. You can go to Bing. Girl, you can go to Yahoo. I mean, like, there's like a plethora of search uh, engines that you can actually use to find information. White if you search are really engines. interested in unlearning bigoted ideology, but we all know that you're not actually interested in learning. learning you just want to waste our time and then gaslight us as soon as we answer your fucking question but that's besides the point let me really bet. yeah you're right they're really what they're scared of is the possibility of being disagreed with on anything they say and challenged yep. it's like yep. you dare challenge my narrative you a piece of shit fuck you you're a goddamn you imbecile me. you didn't agree with everything that i said you <sighs> gaslighted me I mean, who would want to be, who would even want to hang around someone who's prerequisite for even, like, the slightest bit of cordiality is 100% deferral to them on all matters? I mean, it's, it's basically just like, I'm God in my own little universe, and anyone who challenges me, you're just gone. You're gone from my life. You're not even allowed to disagree. Back in real quick. So, yeah, he comes in there demanding information. 
and I politely direct him to my PayPal. I let him know that if PayPal is not his preferred method of payment, he can use my cash account by Squarespace. I have two. Bitch, I'm multifaceted. You know, like if you don't like one, I got the other. He tried to say some corny ass shit along the lines of, uh, well, you have to pay me $30 a fucking letter that I typed to reply to this. Ha 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 ha, bitch. I screen captured that conversation just with his response and then me responding back and I captioned it, no free intellectual labor or fuck you pay me or some shit like that, some, something along the no lines. No free intellectual labor. <laughs> no free intellectual labor. You try, someone goes and they're like, let's have a conversation about this subject matter. Excuse me, no free intellectual labor. You wanna converse with me? You gotta pay me some fucking money first. This is, this is where we've arrived. This I mean, is, look, this is where it, the internet has arrived. This I don't, woman I don't need to pay to talk to that, retards. That, that, Let me tell that, you something. People should pay her to talk to her. Let me tell you something. I mean, I if I see a message in any inbox that I don't like or I have no interest in responding to, you know what I do? I don't respond to it, and I keep fucking scrolling, and I fucking find something else that I do want to respond to. Or if there's nothing to respond to, I just fucking leave the inbox and go do something else. <laughs> you mean you don't sit there and think about all of those messages that you didn't respond to, TJ? I mean, if I fucking... Can you imagine if I just, like, I just selected a random message in my inbox and just made a video like, The impudence of this fucking piece of shit trying to ask me a question. We all know what he's really like. Yeah, why, why would you have an ass box? And then you're, you're going to say it's intellectual labor? Let me tell you something. If you're not a white male, don't ask me shit. Of you paying me for the information that you expect me to give you. You uh, know how you pay no, they for your question. You pay for products. That's I mean, totally you optional. pay for education nowadays. I mean, you don't get to go to school for free. Like okay, no one views your answer to the question as education. They view it as conversation. They may, Maybe they'll learn something in the conversation, yeah, I mean, but no one views you as a fucking educator. Yeah, uh, are you some sort of licensed educator? I mean, do you have a formal education to be an educator? I mean... Yeah, are, are you an expert with someone's, in, in some field where people actually will pay you? Because that is true. If you're an expert in some field, then yeah, you can get paid to talk about what you know about. Sure. Yeah, she's got a she's got a master's degree from <laughs> Loudmouths on the Internet University. Yeah. You're going to public uh, school, and that's know. only up to high school. So I don't even understand why you expect me, a stranger, to answer all of your questions. Are just you not a you maybe, Oh wait, I, I don't know. know. Maybe it was that moment you fucking created a Tumblr and then enabled the ask box. Maybe that's when they figured they could ask you a question. I don't know. I'm crazy like that, but I think that could be it. Life. You're white. <laughs> Duh. So yeah, basically when I screen capture that or whatever and I put it on Tumblr, girl, they just like ascended into my motherfucking mentions. I mean, just one after the other. I love this, this gesture. Crap. I love this gesture here. Ascended. Yeah. Ascended. Uh, yeah. It's like... Yeah. Bitch, this white fucking bitch. People like this piss me off. Just I would, I would explain to, to her why that, why that's funny, but um, she hasn't paid me for my fucking knowledge. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I would explain to her why it looks stupid for her to say, "Ascended <laughs> the, the rocket ship ascended <laughs> from the sky." <laughs> I would explain to her why that makes her look like a fucking mongoloid retard, <laughs> but she hasn't she hasn't hit up that ask but she hasn't hit up that PayPal yet for my knowledge. So <laughs> gotta charge you more for that shit. Wow, he came in there so nice and you still responded with fuck you pay me. Your cause is never gonna get any attention if this is how you treat your allies. <laughs> went all the way, went all the way with that shit. Call that nigga an ally and he don't even know what white privilege is. Girl, where? Where do they do that at? Please inform me. Give me the coordinates. One, we don't need you guys. And if you feel as if we need you guys to get our point across, or if you feel that we need you guys in order for our message to be valid, I mean, fucking message. This is our life. Okay, literally. well, you know, your message to be valid, okay? If you're talking about white privilege or whatever your opinion is, the burden of proof is to you. You're making a claim about Here's something. Here's how ideas work. You have, like, if you want an idea to be successful and to actually impact society, yeah, it's kind of important that you get people on board with that idea. You yeah. know, we all just kind of assume that 
most people who have ideas that they want to convince people of want people to gravitate towards that idea. I mean... Here's the truth. You live in a society where most people do not have the same skin color as you. And you notice some societal ills based around having the same skin color as you do. Now, you have to go out and convince the other people that live in this country who you claim are perpetrating these ills against you to stop doing it. And you're not going to do that when they come to you and ask an honest question, if you go, fuck you, you're not a, you're not a black woman. I don't, it's not my job to educate you. Hit up my PayPal if you want my time. You're gonna get nowhere. That's the truth. Spinning your wheels in the mud. If we have to abide by your rules and regulations on how we deliver that message, so basically you tone policing us, if you need yeah, all of that in order for- By the way, white, white people, people quit. White... Go ahead. White people didn't invent how ideas spread. This, that we didn't make some rule. We're not trying to impose some rule on you that we cooked up as white people. Like, yeah, we know as white people, we're, we're better at ideas. So let's, let's hamstring the blacks with this idea clause. No, <laughs> ideas spread the way that they do because they're good ideas. When an idea is good, people across the spectrum pick up on it. That's the way it works. When Sometimes an idea even when it's bad, bad, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When an idea is bad, people do the same thing. For you to believe that we're actually telling the truth. Bitch, you ain't no fucking ally. And we don't need you. We don't need any of you motherfucking guys. So if you really feel like you want to hop up into my video and my comments and my mentions with that white savior you better complex, agree with me. bitch, you can exit stage left. I know, like, on my channel, I kind of rage at black dudes a lot because, like, I have an immediate proximity to black dudes. But don't you for a second, bitch, think that I won't come for your ass, too. Don't come up into my shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm so scared. Please don't well, come for my ass. I'm going to exactly what she wants. Uh, after we watch this video on the show tonight, I'm going to completely sh forget she ever fucking existed <laughs> and never seek out her content again. So uh, I guess she wins. You know? Yeah, you win. You win, Philogy Noir. By the way, white people invented Noir. So <laughs> you can't have it. I don't know what Philogy is, but we might have invented that too. Probably. So, um, do you want to do one more segment? Nope. Go to the post show. Go to the post show. It's time for the post show. I'm going to play the intro to the feminist slam poetry thing just so everyone can see it. Cool. All right. Show them the new intro we got for it. Yeah. We don't actually have any feminist slam poetry because we we're do. Gonna we're going to watch it in the post show. Oh, is that what you want to do? All yeah. Right. But we'll show them the intro here. Here it is. I want to give a big fuck you to all the men who make my anger possible. <laughs> Does that black woman have a bloody tampon on her daishiki headdress? <laughs> yep. Yes. Nice. She sure does. All, all right, right. Everyone, give it a thumbs up. We'll, we'll see you in the post show. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.